Коли окупанти до нас в Україну Форма новенька воєнні машини Та трохи поплавився їх інвентар Байрактар Байрактар Російські танкісти сховали з кущі Щоб лавтим посорбати довба ніжчі Та трохи у чах перегрівся на бар Байрактар Великой страны. Доводи всяке озброєння, різні потужні ракети, машини залізні у нас на всі доводи є коментар. Байрактар. Байрактар. Вони захопити хотіли на зразу, а ми зачаїли на ордів образу з російських бандитів. Робить примар. Байрактар. Байрактар Російська поліція справи заводить Там пивцю рашистів ніяк не знаходить Хто винен, що в нашому полі глухар Байрактар Байрактар Веде пропаганду кремлівський урод Слова пропаганди ковтає народ Тепер нове слово знає цар Байрактар 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 Oh. 
Hello, everyone. I'm the Enforcer, and I'm accompanied by Enforcer Matt. And good evening, folks. It's Enforcer Matt, and welcome back to Day 759 of the News. And it's good to see you all once again on LSA Day Today. Ukraine has given Russia a nice big treat in Crimea. And it's good to see you all once again. And, of course, we're going to be covering the past 24 hours of the news of the war in Ukraine. But most importantly, tonight is a very special night for this channel and for this incredible community that revolves around it. Tonight, two years ago on this very day, an hour and 54 minutes into the stream, two years ago, the Lee Spring Army was first mentioned in the live chat and was born. An entire two years ago. And two years later, the Lee Spring Army continues on its tradition and legacy of being one of the strongest and largest pro-Ukraine communities on the entirety of the internet and continue to, uh, to provide massive support to Ukraine and also be one of the loudest voices seen in support of Ukraine on the entirety of the internet. I gotta say that it's amazing to know that we've been able to do this for two years with y'all and have been able to head the Lee Spring Army the entire way from beginning to end all the way up until now. I gotta thank every single one of y'all that has been here, here with us so far and I gotta thank everyone who is joining us tonight to hear the major news that has been coming out over the past 24 hours alone. Much like yesterday, today has been nothing but endless breaking news stories. From Crimea all the way up to Moscow, and from Moscow all the way into Ukraine, things have been going on massively in every single direction. But I gotta say, I love to see that everyone is so happy that the LSA was born, because the LSAs are blowing up in the chat, and not only that, it is the very end of LSA week starting today, right now. At the end of this stream tonight, LSA week will officially end, the entire week building up to the actual birth of the Lee Spring Army two years ago. And I got to thank every single one of y'all once again for being here with us tonight, two years after the Lee Spring Army was ever founded. But with that out of the way, it's time for us to get on into that breaking news that we have tonight. And there's a lot of it from the Crocus City Hall and the follow-ups that we've gotten from that attack to the Black Sea Fleet being attacked again and having their entire communication headquarters and really the remainder of the headquarters of the Russian Black Sea Fleet completely destroyed in Sevastopol. And on top of that, the Kerch Bridge closing again and massive frontline movements inside of Ukraine and also other things as well, like an incoming air attack. Things are just massive today. I mean, I can't even describe how big uh, things have gotten. But it's time for us to move on into our first breaking news story of the night, which is from the city of Sevastopol. We were able to find the exact location that was attacked within Sevastopol, which is this large military uh, communications yard, or more so Black Sea Fleet uh, operational headquarters right down here. Many people may be a little bit uh, confused at the moment, saying, well, what do you mean? The Black Sea Fleet headquarters is this building right here. A part of it is this building. This is where the actual admirals of the fleet would gather and start to conduct operations on shore for the Black Sea Fleet, which you can see here on the satellite picture. A lot of them were moored not that far away when this picture was taken. They're not there any longer. A lot of these ships have actually ended up sinking to the bottom of the Black Sea in between when the satellite picture was taken now and the present day. Uh, but moving on back down into this major Black Sea Fleet area, this is a large communications hub for the Russian Navy. We can actually see some of these satellite uh, antennas right here that would be used to help communicate with ships that are underway at sea on, in the Black Sea Fleet. And not only that, we can also see the other large complexes that are a part of and share um, its operations with the rest of these communications relays and also the other parts of the headquarters that are based out of this area. Moving on from that and on into the actual clips that we got, we got never-ending clips and footage of this headquarters being attacked. And I'm going to move you all into our first clip that we got right here. This one is probably one of the shorter ones I believe we have tonight, only 32 seconds long, but beginning right at the very first Storm Shadow explosion. The Ukrainians launched, from what we understand, three Storm Shadows into the dead center of this Black Sea Fleet headquarters, severely disabling, if not completely, completely destroying whatever was in the area and also knocking out the Russian Black Sea Fleet's abilities to uh, communicate with ships that are underway at sea in the Black Sea at the moment. So, here's the video. There's the first hit, the second one, and here comes the third right there. That's some expensive missiles flying in like that in that many quantities. Pretty expensive. I think that was about $3 million of missiles that just blew up in a few mere seconds. And there's Seriously, another explosion. I 
and we see the air defense continuing to fire in the distance. But once again, it appears that while maybe Russian air defense may have been able to try and stop at least one incoming air target, they weren't able to stop the three that literally just slam dunked the Russian naval base that's in the middle of the city. From what we understand, it was geolocated to be pretty much right on top of these antennas or hitting the buildings that are surrounding these antennas. We're not exactly sure which uh, one it is, whether it hit the building or the antenna, because we haven't been able to get any on-the-ground pictures or footage after the attack. But one thing is fairly certain is that the communication abilities or the communication headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet has most likely been completely destroyed in this attack. It was very decisive with the kind of blow it dealt. And with three Storm Shadow missiles hitting within seconds of each other, we are assuming that it is a complete devastation or a complete destruction of this communications headquarters. Moving on from this clip and into our next one, we were able to get more angles and videos of the attack as it was underway. Also, by the way, we were able to get right here the geolocation, and we were also able to see the different um, point of views that were given of the attack, and all of them do triangulate the exact attack position right here, right here on these satellites. You can actually see here, and they go through this a great deal, uh, at least on the different point of views that we're going to be seeing here in a second if this loads, and hopefully it does. Point of view one was from up here on the hill looking down towards the naval base. Over here on POV2, we can also see that another view was taken from some kind of an apartment building over towards the base. From POV3, which appears to be the closest one, they were once again looking at the base. But all of these point of views intersect onto this specific area right here where these relay uh, satellites or relay dishes are at. And that means that we're going to now move you all on to the prolonged clips that we were able to get showing all of the different point of views of the attack that occurred on this base. We can hear the explosions in this clip. Man, it's safe to say it's not a good time to vacation in Crimea. That no. beach is uh is uh, bumping. We now see the next clip, this one taken way off in the distance, almost outside the city, but still showing us the faint glints of the explosion that were occurring on the headquarters. We hear the explosions once more. In this clip, we can actually see what appears to be smoke rising from the headquarters, possibly from earlier attacks. We can now see the Russian air defense trying to work in the area with little to no success. Explosion is still continuing. Someone just got on the loudspeaker apparently in the middle of all this because you could hear him out there going, Hello, everyone, don't be concerned. <laughs> and then there's another missile impacted the city, setting off Carl. And we need the we need the Russians to pull out that old good old classic. It's just a thunderstorm be out the line again. Oh so good. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Now we can once again hear the air defense trying to shoot down the incoming air targets. We hear another explosion, car alarms going off all over the place. That sounds like a house alarm or something. You know, that alarm comes on on every single clip that's ever come from Russia, in period. Now here's a close-up film of the Russian air defense trying to shoot down the incoming missiles. We 
not hear one of the explosions right there, close nearby. <laughs> we hear the three explosions of the storm shadows right there. And now I think if, uh, if I was living in Crimea, I think I'd probably be packing my crap up and uh, getting the hell out of this point. Because I think in Sevastopol, uh, the real estate values are going down. I had to be honest with you, Matthew. If I was in Crimea right now, I'd have to cry me a river because the property devaluation must be insane right now. No one wants to buy in Crimea anymore. But specifically, the Russian Black Sea Fleet is probably going to be putting a lot of real estate up for sale here soon because not only was the Black Sea Fleet's actual headquarters destroyed earlier last year, right up here, but now the communications headquarters, which really has become the main headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet, has now also been destroyed as well in this explosion. There is no doubt about it. Oh, I know that we don't have any video or picture evidence at the moment to confirm its complete destruction, but with three Storm Shadow missiles, each one having about a 1,000 pound explosive yield in them, there is no doubt that this area here has been completely destroyed in the attack. There's no question about it. It's 3,000 pounds of explosives hitting almost on the exact same location with pinpoint accuracy. And on top of that, Russian air defense not really stopping a single one of the incoming storm shadows. It leads us to believe that the Russian Black Sea Fleet is now completely disabled as far as having any kind of communications with the vessels that are currently underway at sea. That's another thing that we haven't explained at this point is why this communication headquarters is important. This communication headquarters allows the Russian Black Sea Fleet to have easy communication with the actual um, upper chain of command in Moscow uh, in the Ministry of Defense and to then disseminate those orders from the Ministry of Defense to the Black Sea Fleet or to the admirals in the area. Not only that, but it also provides the Black Sea Fleet the ability to also communicate with its ships that are currently out at sea inside of the Black Sea. With this communications relay now put out of action, the Black Sea Fleet may not have any redundant systems that can reach out and talk to the ships that are currently underway. Um, they may have to be forced to return back to port to await further orders or to try and figure out what's going on in Sevastopol and then try and get some sort of a workaround where they can continue to communicate with their ships. Overall, this is a big thing for Ukraine. And once again, showing that they are starting to make some pretty serious moves in a, well really against the black sea fleet and against the russian federation to continue to put the russian navy completely out of action for the rest of the war the reason why they've been trying to do this is so that way they can limit the amount of cruise missiles uh, and ballistic missiles that are fired at ukraine at any given point because the russian black sea fleet with the kilo class submarines and also some of their surface combat vessels has been one of the largest parts of every single missile attack that used to occur in the earlier parts of the war now as the war has continued on that's becoming less and less of a case it's more so the air force and the ground forces that are uh, conducting the missile attacks on ukraine but still these efforts are helping to take a lot of pressure off of ukraine from missile attacks originating from the area of the black sea moving on from that major news inside of sevastopol and quickly hopping over to the other side of the peninsula we were able to see that the attack was severe enough that it passed the crimean bridge litmus test as the bridge was shut down we were able to get that off of a traffic report we can see right here both ends of the bridge both going across the bridge and going to the bridge have been completely shut down according to the traffic map this is once again showing us that the crimean bridge is now the litmus test for the entire region if anything happens in krasnodar it if anything happens in Crimea and it actually produces some kind of damage or some kind of positive results, the Kerch Bridge will be shut down every single time now, just as a precaution by the Russians, but clearly giving us a very, very nice, neat indicator that lets us know that something serious has happened. Otherwise, they would not be shutting down the bridge. But beyond that, it's something interesting to note that the Ukrainians are really throwing the kitchen sink uh, at the Black Sea Fleet. A lot of storm shadows were fired. The Ukrainians don't have a lot of these things. It's actually quite a limited amount. And for them to launch this many storm shadow missiles, three of them, onto a singular target, it's giving us the idea that they are maybe trying to uh, blitz the Russians during some kind of a crisis and really take advantage of maybe the chaos that's going on internally in the Russian government to further their attacks on the Russians and help themselves out in getting an upper foot uh, or an upper hand in the war. But many of y'all have put an in input on this kind of an idea. A lot of y'all have been talking about that in the chat at the moment. And Matthew, I know specifically that you have a lot to say about this because we were talking about this right before stream. 
So yes, indeed. And the question to the audience is, Ukraine has launched a major storm shadow attack on Crimea today, and the Black Sea fleet, or what's left of it in Crimea, and Sevastopol has fled, and what are your thoughts? Uh, 55% said Ukraine is blitzing Russia during a crisis. 29% said Ukraine is just launching routine attacks. And 9% said, I really can't tell what's going on. So to me, it looks like Ukraine is throwing the kitchen sink at Russia. And this is coming right on the heels of a terror attack in Moscow, which Ukraine had no involvement in. Got to make that perfectly clear right now. And also it's coming on the heels of all kinds of other things going on, like oil uh, refinery attacks, as well as the situation in Belgorod. So Ukraine is basically kicking Russia while it's down, which is a pretty surefire way to make sure that Ukraine puts a whooping uh, on Russia, to say it pretty plainly. So I think it's a good thing, and they're definitely putting the hurt on them. But Enforcer, what say you? I would have to say that the Ukrainians are taking advantage of a fairly decent situation. The Russians are in chaos everywhere. They're moving air defense systems around, at least according to their public statement, to try and protect the oil refineries throughout the rest of the Russian Federation. And not only that, they are also having to deal with storm shadow missiles that once again are largely stealth and are completely undetectable for Russian radar systems, meaning there's really no way to stop these things. Overall, I'd have to say that this is a very good thing to see and wonderful to know that they were able to conduct such a successful attack. Also, Miss Disa, I did see the message and we did make sure to correct for that. So hopefully that is fixed. But with that, I hope that does address that, well, at least in my opinion, on what the Ukrainians are doing, because it did not end there today for Ukrainian attacks. Once again, the oil uh, refineries inside of Samara are still burning as of right now. Not just one was hit, two were hit overnight. And it appears that the damage has once again been severe, and these oil refineries have been shut down and put out of action. Moving on from the Samara area, we also got some very urgent news that just an hour before the stream went live, Russian Tu-95 bombers, 14 of them, were spotted airborne and heading to their launch zones inside of the northern Caspian Sea, just south of Ostrakhan, and are most likely going to be moving their way back across the southern area of the Don, which is pretty much what this entire area is called, and then firing off their missiles inside of the southern sea of Azov. Once again, beginning another missile attack on the Ukrainians, most likely within the next hour. Probably while we're live on air right now uh we'll be waiting to see if that does unfold and happen it most likely will uh because these bombers do not go airborne for no reason they always are conducting a missile attack whenever a large wave of russian bombers take to the skies and then start to orbit inside the northern caspian area at the exact same time we were able to get more news from the crocus city hall attack and some very interesting news some pretty pretty wild news i gotta say there's really no better way to explain the kind of news that we got. So to try and catch y'all up on everything that's happened in between yesterday when we reported this and today, ISIS has taken full credit for the attack. They say that it is ISIS. The United States uh, intelligence or the intelligence services is saying that ISIS was behind the attack as well. Everyone's saying that ISIS is behind the attack. Even the fighters themselves are saying that ISIS is behind the attack, or more so the terrorists that conducted this attack on Crocus Hall. We were able to see that the fire that was started that we had footage of yesterday burned completely out of control and the roof truly did collapse on the building. We were able to get some pictures from Visegrad 24 showing the damage to the roof of Crocus Hall, which we'll see right here. And there is the damaged section of the building. The roof literally caved in from the sheer heat of the flames that were caused by the fire that was started inside of the concert hall by the terrorists. From what we understand, this was never caught on film, but the terrorist group that uh, made its way through the lobby and then uh, fired onto the crowds that they were coming in along the way, they made it into the concert hall. And we saw the clip yesterday. They were firing in that general area of the concert hall. They threw a Molotov in front of them in the center of the concert hall, which then started a fire, which ravaged the entire concert hall and the lobby. And the fire burned so severely that it uh, compromised the structural integrity of the roof and the roof caved in as a result. Pretty much the entire area of the Crocus Expo Center called Crocus City Hall has been completely destroyed at this point and will most likely be entirely unrecoverable. But we can see the damage here as they continue to fly over. Also, Enforcer, uh, do you happen to know exactly how the building caught on fire originally? Because I found out today, and I'm, I'm just curious if you knew. Um, from what I heard, it was some kind of a Molotov or some kind of a uh, incendiary that the gunman had, and they threw it into the middle of the concert hall, from what I'm hearing. 
So what I saw today, and it was reported by a couple different sources, which are pretty credible, is one of the guys apparently had a flamethrower, and he came in with the flamethrower spewing it everywhere, and that's what started the fire itself. And I'm, you know, I had a hard time believing that, but considering so many people reported it, I guess that maybe is the case. Interesting. I heard it was a Molotov, but nevertheless, something else interesting to note, Matthew, is that this giant hole in the roof right here where the structure has been compromised that is actually the concert hall right there. This flat area where the mouse cursor is moving is the stage, which we saw on film yesterday, where so many people were trying to run out of the concert hall behind the curtains and out of the building any way that they could find. Uh, so pretty interesting to see. And moving on from that, we got more evidence of the damage that was caused to Crocus Hall in this clip right here. I mean, of course, see, the top of the building is completely burned out. The windows exploded from the heat. And moving on from that and into our next clip, so you can still see some smoke inside the building. We can, of course, see the heavy damage that was caused. And we also believe that this may have been the little bar that we saw where one of the cameramen from yesterday was hiding behind it as the sounds of gunfire from the gunman continued to emanate through the lobby of the building. We can also see right here the same picture, and then after that, we can see the pictures of the alleged gunmen, um, all four of them, or I heard there was five, but apparently there's only pictures of four of them that we have right here. Also, really quickly, sadly, Matthew will not be able to see this clip, but LSA Sergeant Figment, one of our uh, amazing channel viewers, and of course, the sergeant of the LSA, or the LSA Sergeant Figment, was able to send us a pretty uh, good video. Uh, and let me make sure to go over here really quickly and show you all this clip that LSA Sergeant Figment showed us on Discord. So I'm going to pop this up real quick on screen. We see the Russian first responders here. Oh, you see the Russians, of course, trying to look like they're busy for the cameras. Uh, showing off some of the um, discarded luggage that was left behind. But you can also see the damaged concert hall right here. Unfortunately, Matthew cannot see this, but this was where the gaping large hole in the roof was seen. I actually have seen that clip, by the way. Interesting. Uh, I didn't know. <laughs> but we can see them uh, continuing to try and clear out the building. It looks like they're already working on some kind of uh, rescue efforts or salvage efforts. We can also see that the water is still producing steam from the heat of the building. And also we see a part of the structure giving way right there and collapsing into the middle of the concert hall. We then see the first responders continuing to move in and out of the building. And this is the end of that clip. Huge shout out to LSA Sergeant Figment for sending that to us uh, while we were in the middle of making the news tonight. Incredible shout out to LSA Sergeant Figment for helping to make part of this news possible tonight. But beyond that, we did also hear that around 90 Russian citizens were killed in the attack uh, and many more were wounded. We believe that the number of wounded is over 100 at this point. But moving on from that and into the city of Moscow, we already started to hear that Russia is beginning to blame Ukraine for the Crocus attack. Uh, we actually summarized this on our Twitter, and just to read exactly what we put on our Twitter, Russia has begun blaming Ukraine for the Crocus Hall terrorist attack in Moscow, and Putin is vowing severe retribution, and Russian leaders are setting the stage for most likely something drastic. Maybe a mobilization for an entire war campaign or a war effort, uh, but Peskov, who is a pretty high up person inside the Russian government, I believe he's the foreign minister, has uh, begun calling the special military operation a full-blown war and oddly enough he started to call it that literally just mere hours before the attack at crocus city hall began i'm also going to show you all the statement that putin made just last night about a few hours after we went off air uh speaking directly about the incident at crocus city hall once again, notice that while he doesn't say that Ukraine was directly responsible, he does insinuate that the Ukrainians supported this attack on the Russians and said that the terrorists had an exit route that would have led them to the Ukrainian border and across it into Ukraine where they would be safe from Russian hands. Notice the statement that you'll make around the 30-second mark about that. 
В Москве и Подмосковье во всех регионах страны введены дополнительные меры антитеррористического и противодиверсионного характера. Главное сейчас не дать тем, кто стоит за этой кровавой бойней, совершить новые преступления. Что касается расследования этого преступления и результатов оперативно-розыскных действий, то в настоящее время можно сказать следующее. Все четверо непосредственных исполнительных теракт, все те, кто стрелял, убивал людей, найдены и задержаны. Они пытались скрыться и двигались в сторону Украины. There it is, right there. They were trying to escape and were moving towards Ukraine, where, according to preliminary data, a window had been prepared for them on the Ukrainian border side to cross the state border. Once again, using this as a false flag attack to try and directly insinuate that the Ukrainians were sponsoring and supporting this attack on the Crocus City Hall building. The United States has made it very clear that ISIS was the only one responsible for this, this attack and it had absolutely no Ukrainian involvement. ISIS itself has said that this is the most brutal attack that they have conducted in years anywhere around the world and that they were completely responsible for it and there were no other state actors that were working alongside ISIS to make this happen. And yet Putin is here on Russian state TV once again insinuating that the Ukrainians were the ones behind this and trying to use this as some sort of a justification for further escalations in the war in Ukraine. I feel like we were able to call this pretty dead on yesterday that this attack did seem to be a little bit odd and they were most likely going to try and use this as a false flag attack to justify further escalations against Ukraine. But moving on from that, we're going to be getting uh, out of the Moscow area and moving on towards the area of the Russian border because there's still a lot going on down there at the moment. Um, but nevertheless, some people are starting to talk about what the Russians are saying and also what the Ukrainians are doing, which are happening simultaneously. The Ukrainians are hitting literally everything they can. The Russian communication headquarters for the Black Sea Fleet. They're also hitting um, Russian oil refineries farther behind the lines than we've ever seen before they're also they're literally doing anything and everything they can of course not conducting that terrorist attack and i want to make that double and triple clear tonight they were not the ones at all involved behind the terrorist attack but they have been pulling out every single thing that they can including the kitchen sink to try and give themselves an upper hand in the war and i've seen and you know i hate to say it but you know we look around twitter a little bit and there are always some interesting statements that people make on twitter and one of the ones that we've seen recently is that they're saying that Ukraine is doing all of these things, not because it's a strategic idea, it's more so that Ukraine is just desperate to try and do something to get ahead in the war. And that is a very odd statement to me. Let me know what y'all think in the comments about that. Do y'all think that Ukraine is doing that to be strategic, attacking everything they possibly can all at the same time, or are they doing it because they're desperate? I'd be interested to know what y'all are thinking about that. But Matthew, I know that you have some very interesting opinions uh, on that matter. And not only that, you've actually been able to talk to a few people about that very topic and get their ideas on the matter as well. So yes, indeed. And we asked the audience, we said Ukraine is launching every type of attack imaginable on Russia in rapid succession. And the question is, is Ukraine desperate? 62% said no, Ukraine is being strategic. 20% said yes, Ukraine is uh, desperate right now. And 8% said it seems like it, but maybe not. And one thing we have to remember here is, first off, I don't think Ukraine is desperate whatsoever. In fact, I think Ukraine has the upper hand right now, and that's why they're kicking Russia while they're down, because it's an opportune time to weaken Russia to the point where Ukraine can defeat them on the battlefield and cause enough chaos in Russian mainland uh, to destabilize their country, which obviously hurts them on the battlefield as well. So, in my opinion, this is just a, a normal operation here. It's not out of desperation. And also remember that Russia just got done attacking Ukraine yesterday or a couple of days ago in a major infrastructure attack. And the way I view these attacks are simply retaliatory strikes um, by Ukraine on Crimea for that attack that happened yesterday when Russia hit the uh, Dnipro Dam. So that's my view on it. But Enforcer, what say you? I would have to say, in my opinion, Ukraine is launching all of these attacks uh, as strategically in a vein as strategic as possible. It is always within a country's advantage to do everything that they can within their power at any given moment during a war because those extra little bits of exertion are usually what helps a country to end up winning a war. It would make no sense for the Ukrainians to act reserved uh, if they were winning the war 
it would make a lot more sense for them to go all out and keep going stronger and harder to try and end up beating the Russian armed forces in the field and also the Russian Federation as a country. Uh, so I hope that does address that well, in my opinion, because I'd have to say I'm with the large majority of y'all that think the Ukraine is being strategic in its decisions to attack certain targets because that would be the only logical conclusion I can come up with. It's a lot like how the Russian bots try and say that Russia is winning the war and that's why they're holding back. So that way they can just sit here and prolong the war forever because they just win it too quickly anyways. It's not like the movies where people try and drag things out because they enjoy the fun they're having. A war is a pretty horrendous thing. Not just for the folks that are actually having to fight the war, but for the countries that are having to balance the spreadsheets of this ongoing war. The Russians are fighting a very expensive war. Ukraine is also fighting that very same war, and it's also expensive for them as well. So it would make no sense for both parties to go, you know what, we're having a fun time, let's drag this thing out as long as possible. That makes absolutely no sense, and that's why the Ukrainians are working as hard as they can to attack everything within, um, the, within possibility, so that way they can hopefully end this war very soon. Um, so with that, I hope that does address that, at least in my opinion, the best I can. But with that, it's time for us to start moving on into the Free Russian Army news, because we haven't been getting a lot of it. It appears that uh, the Free Russian Army isn't putting out a lot of information about their activities. Neither is the Russian Army putting out a lot of uh, information about their activities or the activities of the Free Russian Army. It's almost an informational black hole as far as these areas go. We do know that the Free Russian Army is continuing to hold them, and the Russians have not pushed them out. But beyond that, we don't get much more information than um, what we're seeing right now, which are these two little clips that we got from Belgrade today. Our first one does show some RDK soldiers standing along the border of, uh, of Belgrade near to the Ukrainian area. We can see them right here holding up a flag of the RDK. And also, interestingly enough, um, having some pretty interesting weapons. Unlike other um, uh, Free Russian Army units that we've seen, these RDK soldiers are equipped specifically with AK-74s. And that's it. We're not seeing any other kind of small arm being used by these guys here, which is very interesting because usually it seems like the primary service weapon of the Free Russian Army is the CZ Bren 2 or some kind of an M4 rifle. We rarely ever see AK-74s at this point in the war. Even in the Ukrainian Army, the AK-74s are becoming a little bit uh, stretched in numbers, and we're starting to see more Western rifles than we are AKs. But... Still, nevertheless, this unit appears to be holding out on the AKs and using them as their primary rifle. A very interesting side note, but still showing that they are inside of the Belgrade Oblast. Moving on from that, we also saw that bombardment of Belgrade is still happening by the Free Russian Army even right now. This video just came out around a few hours ago in the middle of the night in Belgrade, and we were able to get a clip letting us hear the sounds of explosions and also um, the sights of explosions as well. And so here's the clip. We see one of the explosions right there in this next clip. We hear the air raid siren sounding over the city. We hear the explosions in the distance. We hear the sounds of explosions continuing on. For some reason, it sounded like there was an Irish man behind the camera. I have no idea why. But we can still see in Belgrade the car alarms going off, the air raid sirens. And also the sounds of heavy explosions continuing in the distance, still showing a heavy Free Russian Army presence near to the area of Belgrade. And with that, that's the end of the clip right there. Uh, but nevertheless, very uh, interesting here that the Free Russian Army is still continuing their bombardments of Belgrade and showing that they have a clear control of some parts of the Belgrade Oblast to be able to continue these kinds of artillery strikes. Uh, this is something that is 
very interesting because once again an mlrs can only fire about 12 miles meaning that the free russian army has to have taken maslova pristan like we've been saying for a while now for them to be able to bring mlrs's close enough to the area to be able to fire into belgrade itself and we continue to see that that is the case on video evidence that some of these mlrs rockets are landing dead center in belgrade meaning that these mlrs's are only as far away as maslova pristan and firing from that direction um also i have never seen almost american style looking suburb layouts anywhere in russia except for right here just south of tovrovo which is a uh, pretty much a suburb of belgrade i've never seen road layouts like these in the russian federation anywhere but it appears that these are the well at least they exist here let's see what we can see on the street and also did you see down the map by the way it looked like a <laughs> ripoff like papa john's there was a papa pizza uh down the road from this neighborhood did you see that papa pizza Wait, hang on. <laughs> oh. oh, no, no, no. Oh. Yeah, right, hold on now. Like, if you told me I go pick up pizza from that house, that's Papa Pizza. I mean, I'm not going to the door. Hell no. You're never coming back out. <laughs> man, Papa Papa Pizza is going to be doing some terrible things to you, man. He's going to he's going to be uh, he's going to be laying down some extra uh, extra tomato sauce and some extra dough. You know what I mean? Or more so, he's going to be man, getting Papa some dough Pizza. Just my nickname. <laughs> All right, give me your dough. <laughs> it's, it's like, no, nah, man, I think I'm good. But goodness, gosh, man, I, I was like, I was looking at the street layout. I was like, oh, maybe like an American style suburb. You drop down in there. Nope, just absolute hell. It looks worse than Detroit. Look at this. I mean, this is horrendous. This is pretty rough, man. Like one side of the road's got uh, some like a uh, sort of like higher end looking brick. And the other side has got that orange, like clay looking brick. I'm telling you, there's really no, uh, no, like a uh, good building going on here. And that's cinder blocks, yeah, actually. That's Never just, mind. That's just actual cinder blocks. Like, and what the hell's up with the bunker, like gun slit right there near the door? Like you can stick a machine gun out of that thing and start mowing people down. Like what the hell is the point of that? That's not even a window. Man, they're just building for the area, you know? It's uh, the house is the product of the environment, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, a little too much. Uh, and, and Papa Pizza is certainly a product of the environment. But beyond that, goodbye to Papa Pizza, uh, because we will not be going back there. And hopefully, the Free Russian Army can take over this area and get rid of Papa Pizza once and for all, because I think it's an abomination to the locals and probably an absolute menace to the community. But moving on from Belgrade... It is time for us to move on from the Free Russian Army's activities, although quietly being spoken of, and it's time for us to once again circle back to the big deal of the night, which is what the Russians are going to be doing in response to the Crocus City Hall attack. We're already seeing that they are clearly working on their way of making this a Ukraine blame game where they blame the Ukrainians for this attack that was clearly conducted by ISIS alone. And uh, we're believing that there is going to be some kind of a severe Russian response or the Russians are going to use this attack for as an excuse to make some sort of a re uh, severe response to what is happening in Ukraine so that way they can try and further the war to their favor. Many people have had many different ideas about what is going to result because of this. And honestly, I'm seeing uh, two major ideas in the chat about what the Russians are going to do as a response. But Matthew, what are those ideas that people are talking about in the chat? Because I see a lot of people kind of going in between mass mobilizations and missile attacks. So, yes. So now we're seeing Putin already trying to blame Ukraine like we had predicted on the first day. I think pretty much everyone saw that coming, uh, that uh, Putin's going to blame Ukraine for that attack in Moscow. How is Russia going to retaliate? And it looks like 52% said mass mobilization of Russia, while 33% said several mass missile attacks. 8% said Russia will use a tactical nuke. And 7% said Russia will ignore it for now. And in my opinion, there's no way in hell uh, that Putin is going to ignore this. Um, he's going to use this to, to his advantage on purpose. That's the whole reason why this is being spun this way by Russian propagandists, uh, that Ukraine had some involvement in it, so that way Putin could have basically free reign and justification to do something horrible to Ukraine. So I don't think he's going to use a tactical nuke, though. I will say that's probably not likely. So we're between the mass mobilization and the several mass missile attacks. And I, I would say the missile attacks are probably a given. But also at the same time, I kind of have a strong suspicion that mass mobilization might be coming in the next week or so. Uh, I think that's a strong possibility, but we'll have to wait and see. But uh, Enforcer, what say you? I would have to say the way the Russians are trying to hype up this attack, they're trying to hype it up to almost be similar to some sort of a Russian form of 9-11. 
Have you noticed that, Matthew? Like the way they're trying to structure this and how Putin was talking to Lukashenko today about creating a uh, coalition against terrorism. It's pretty, it's literally a U.S. playbook for what we did in the early 2000s in the invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq, trying to come up with the exact same justifications against Ukraine, saying that Ukraine is sponsoring terrorism inside of Russia and therefore there needs to be a war on terror and the target is going to be Ukraine. And Ukraine, according to the Russians, is the center of this terrorism. That, that's true. And also, uh, Putin's government's already telling the propagandists on Russian uh, state television to start hyping this up to make sure everyone knows that Ukraine was involved in it, or at least Putin says they were involved in it, which is obviously false. Um, but the propagandists are already, already running pretty strong with this. Uh, we see the uh, typical suspects on Russian state TV pushing that narrative, and they're going to keep doing it. And also, it's going to spread to even the government officials as well saying it. And we already saw some members of the state Duma uh, trying to say the same thing as well. So it's definitely happening. It's certainly happening. I think they're definitely going to use this as their excuse for mass mobilization. And their excuse is going to be, we are having to mobilize the Russian public so that we can, we can defeat the terrorists in Ukraine and bring peace and stability back to Russia. I think that's what they're going for this time around because the severity of this attack was was huge. 90 Russian citizens are dead. And while that's not really a big thing, uh, you know, in the context of the war in Ukraine because 50,000 Ukrainian civilians died in Mariupol alone, it's still a major thing that the Russians can use because it's shocking. You know, the folks were gunned down in the middle of a concert hall trying to listen to some music. These innocent uh, citizens just enjoying their day and these sick Ukrainians sponsored these ISIS terrorists and, and made them conduct this wicked attack on us. And, and these people are just the sickest, the most vile people ever. What kind of people attack women and children and, and just families going to listen to some music? This is absurd and this is why we have to mobilize the entire country of Russia to go into Ukraine and end this terrorism once and for all that is the exact kind of rhetoric i bet is going to be coming out within three days time from this point right now on air then the russians are going to be saying those very things to try and mass mobilize for the war in ukraine because the russians are going to lose this war at this current rate the casualties are too high and at the current conscription rates that they have or more so voluntold rates they can't really keep the russian army growing in size and that's what they have to do to be able to fight this war has grow the Russian army to be larger. They cannot do that at the moment. They can only keep it at around the same size or it's shrinking in size every month. So they are going to use that very rhetoric that I just said on air right there to start getting the Russian public riled up enough and pissed off enough with the Ukrainians that they would be perfectly fine with mass mobilization, mass conscription, and anything else that's required like a wartime economy so that way they can march all of these soldiers into the army, into Ukraine, and try and get just a numbers advantage on the Ukrainians to end up winning this war. I think that's what they're going to be doing. And I think that the United States and the rest of the Western world would be very wise to notice what is happening right now and to start massively working towards getting the most support that has ever been seen over the course of this war into Ukraine right now. To mobilize these hundreds of thousands of new Russians that we would probably be expecting to be in the Russian ranks within the next few weeks or maybe the next few months, it's going to take them a while to actually get these guys in Ukraine. I would assume maybe four to five months. So there's probably a four to five month window that the West can use to supply Ukraine with literally everything that they could ever need, mostly ammunition. That's really going to be the big one for Ukraine going forward. It's just an endless amount of ammunition. And hopefully, with a large amount of ammunition, they will be able to try and stop whatever the Russians have coming on down the pipe. Uh, but with that... You know, you know, and also, one other thing as well. The, if our theory is true, the false flag theory that Putin is using this uh, as a provocation to justify a mass mobilization, that also indicates that Putin knows the Russian public does not want any further mobilization and they would strongly object to it. And thus, he must create a justification for it by doing something like this uh, to be able to make that actually happen and to pull it off without the Russian public uh, going berserk. Uh, so that indicates there might not be very much support for the war left in Russia um, if that theory that we have is true. I would agree, uh, and that may be showing that the Russians are really on a uh, teeter's edge of just falling off and going into complete chaos domestically. Uh, but before we move on into the rest of our news tonight, specifically our location unknowns, and we actually have some pretty interesting ones tonight, two very rare things that you don't really see often, but before we get into those things, I want to make sure to address a couple of things out of the chat. And so, Matthew, what do we got? 
All right, so our first question of the night is going to go to a channel legend. He's been around forever. It's Walter A. Lakota Jr. Hey! who threw in a $50 donation to help keep the channel running and the news flowing. And uh, Walter says, Aloha, Enforcer, Enforcer Matt, and LSA from OG, OG Ellison Boson. Indeed. He says, after the attacks on the Black Sea Fleet Comm Center, the Navy in the Black Sea is different. He says, Fubar slash Sanfu. And in fact, the whole nine yards is nine ammo boxes of 50 cal ammunition. And thank you so much for the massive support, Walter A. Lakota. And thank you for being the OG Ellison Boson, a channel legend through and through. And I got to thank you so much for being here with us tonight on LSA Day of all days. Tonight, we celebrate the two-year anniversary of the LSA. And, and that is incredible to see that you're the Ellison Boson and that you're here tonight celebrating that with us. I also have to say that um, the Black Sea Fleet's comms being messed up is certainly going to be putting a massive... A uh, crank or or a massive uh oh yeah a massive crank in the chain pretty much uh for the Russian Black Sea Fleet because it's going to be next to impossible for them to reliably communicate with their ships at sea or even with the higher command inside of Moscow about what should be done next or what they're planning on doing. So that's going to be a massive problem for the Black Sea Fleet all the way around. And they're going to have to find some way, a much less efficient way, to communicate with Moscow and to communicate with their ships. So I would certainly agree with that. 100% that this is going to be a massive problem um, for the Black Sea Fleet. And it is a foobar or a snafu. But beyond that, also, thank you so much for sharing that fun fact about the whole nine yards phrase. I actually did know where the whole nine yards phrase came from, and you were exactly right, Walter E. Lakota. Uh, it also, I think, uh, I think it was something along the lines of like, the whole nine yards is uh, something like nine yards of ammo belt uh, for the 50 caliber machine guns that were inside of Warbirds in World War II, uh, but still a really, really cool saying. I actually use that one a lot when talking about this channel in the background. This man would be like, well, what do you do today? I was like, oh, yeah, I gave him the whole nine yards. I think Matthew said that a pretty good bit, too. Uh, so, yeah, with that, <laughs> so with that, I hope that does address that the best I can. Thank you so much for the incredible support, Walter E. Lakota, and being here with us tonight. And I got to say, it's amazing that we're able to share this two-year anniversary with all of y'all. So many people have been here with us through thick and thin for over two years. And of course, the Lee Spring Army has existed now as of today for two whole years. I got to say that that is absolutely crazy to me that this channel has been able to last so long that the community that came about after the channel even blew up and after the war in Ukraine even began... It, it's still here and it's still going strong. There are 10,000 people here right now. And at the peak tonight, there were nearly, uh, I think there was 11,200 people here again tonight at the very peak. That is insane to me. And I got to thank everyone for being here with us and continue to stick with us as we try and provide you all the most accurate and up-to-date news on the war in Ukraine. And so with that, thank you so much once again, Walter. I hope I addressed that well. And we are on to the next one. And I'll tell you what, it's a madhouse in the chat tonight. It's an absolute madhouse. The bots are flowing in like crazy. The chat rate's staying high, and it is absolutely bumping uh, on LSA Day today. I'm telling you what, they're putting me to my limits. But anyways, <laughs> the next question goes to Zalt Hook, who's also a longtime channel legend. He throws in a very generous $50 donation as well. Hey! And they good sir for that support. He says, so how we think they are going to respond to the comm center getting smoked, and how will the spending bill in our government affect aid to our allies? Let's see, I think they're going to respond to the comm center getting hit by probably a large missile or drone attack. That's usually the way that they responded in the past, especially when we're talking in context of the Black Sea Fleet headquarters getting hit. They responded exactly verbatim with a large drone attack of Shahed 136s. So I hope that answers that question fairly well. And um, the spending bill in our government... Um, I, I sadly cannot talk about that a lot because I, I usually actually completely avoid at this point any kind of domestic political news, even if it comes to spending, uh, so that way I have no knowledge to be able to speak about partisan topics uh, here in the United States because we try and avoid politics as best as we can here on this channel. Um, we do not pick a side, and we hardly even try and mention it at all, even trying to make fair critiques of everyone involved in the political system here in America. So for that reason, I've actually been going on my way to avoid news on politics so I have absolutely no idea what's going on and no one can try and goad me into saying anything about it. I'd rather make sure that this channel stays as neutral as it possibly can because the LSA is the only 
a political organization that supports Ukraine that I know of right now that does not pick a political side at all and just goes with supporting Ukraine entirely. There is no um, there is no domestic group, according to the LSA, that is right or wrong. As long as you support Ukraine, you are in the right. Uh, and so I got to thank you so much for the support. I hate to say that I can't address that salt hook due to ignorance on my end of the information that would be needed to speak on it. Um, but I hope that addresses why I do not know anything about the spending bill. Uh, but with that, thank you so much once again for the support and helping this channel to keep on running because folks like you do help me to make it possible for us to keep this news politically neutral and just to continue to report on the facts and information that we get from the ground. And so thank you so much once again. And we are on to the final question. Question, and then we're going to be also the final question of this segment, by the way. And then we're going to be moving into the location unknowns and the rest of the news tonight. All right. And the last one goes to Blue Flam Triple Seven LSA, hey! another champ legend who throws in a $20 donation and says, What's the difference between a politician and a snail? One is a slimy, a pest, and leaves a trail everywhere. And the other is a snail. No politics, <laughs> chat. <laughs> Happy LSA Day. Question to the chat. I don't like that, Blue Flam. Put it on him. And I got to thank you so much for the support. And I got to thank you for wishing us a happy LSA day because this is a channel holiday of all days in, in the channel's history. The anniversary of the war in Ukraine is a channel holiday. And also the anniversary of the LSA is another channel holiday. And of course, Matthew and my birthdays are also channel holidays as well. So I think we have like four holidays uh, on this channel. Um, but with that... Um, Let's see. Uh, but with that, I got to thank you so much for the support. I had to read some in the chat. It was like, oh, what is that? Um, but I got to thank you so much for the support, Blue Flam. Of course, throwing in the traditional dad jokes, which we massively respect and adore here on this channel. And also, once again, um, being here with us and continuing to be a big part of the LSA. LSA is literally in your name. And you were actually one of the first people on this channel that put LSA in your name where that became a trend. Uh, I believe Heather Fitzgib and LSA was also another one. I think a lot of y'all ended up doing that around the same time. But a huge shout out to everyone who has LSA in their username because y'all make sure to let the entire world know that y'all are full-on members of the LSA. That is incredible. And I got to thank you, Blue Flam, for being one of those people. And so, Matthew, let's make sure to grab that live chat and then we're going to be moving on back into the news. All right, and the live chat question here is going to go to Stu Bidasso, and that is his name, actually. That is his name. I didn't call him anything. He says, do you think the nuclear power plant will come into play? Um, I would say um, the nuclear power plant probably will not come into play here in the near future. We haven't really seen it coming into play recently. Uh, it appears that its power was almost knocked out again today, though. We're not going to be covering that tonight, but I will tell you that. Uh, and uh, However, the power was restored, so it still has two power connections as of right now, but of course it's in a pretty precarious position. Beyond that, however, I don't think they're going to be using it. Uh, I think a lot of people have been stuck on that, and we've kind of been stuck on that behind the scenes in this channel, because the massive uh, fear that was created by Budinov last year about the nuclear power plant around the same time of year last year, and then nothing came out of it. I think that's why a lot of people are always thinking about the power plant and are greatly concerned about it, but I think that we don't really have to worry about it too much as a weapon that's going to be used here in the near future. And so with that, I hope that does address that live chat well, and thank you so much once again, Blue Flam 777 for supporting that live chat and helping this channel to keep on running. And with that, we're going to be moving on into our location unknowns, actually starting over in the western side of the country, as we got to see a MiG-29 on patrol. Now, this says that it's an Su-27, but I'm telling y'all that with my discerning eyes, that is not an Su-27. Actually, correction, that is entirely an Su-27. That is the trainer model of the Su-27, and for some reason, I mistook it for being a MiG-29 earlier. But it is an Su-27. It has absolutely no armament on board. We do not see any missiles being carried by this Su-27, except for one R-73, which possibly suggests that it's already fired off some of its other missiles in earlier sorties or uh, earlier engagements throughout the day. Uh, however, we were told that it's a pair of SU-27s that are flying over western Ukraine and a really cool picture to see. But with that, we're going to be moving on from that little bit of news right there and across back to the other side of Ukraine to really get into our location unknowns. Starting off with our first one showing an M777, uh, one of the uh, American, well, really western provided uh, artillery systems to Ukraine, unfortunately having a critical failure. We understand that this is not a video that is from right now. Apparently, it's from earlier on in the war, but we just got a video of this right now. But this is what a critical barrel failure w looks like on an artillery piece that has pretty much been worn out and has not had its barrel replaced. Yeah. 
Eesh. Luckily, no one was injured Eesh. or killed in that, luckily, but that is what a critical failure of an artillery piece looks like, is this right here. That. It is a massive fireball of the propellant, or really the powder charge, behind the shell, exiting the barrel on all sides and just sending a, a cloud of shrapnel everywhere. Somehow not onto the operators, which is wild to see, because usually the operators end up getting killed in some kind of a critical failure like this, but none of them did from what I was able to find out. So pretty cool. But with that, that's the end of that little clip right there. And nice to see that that M uh, that, that uh, M777 failure did not lead to Ukrainian casualties. Moving on from that, we were also able to see a very rare sighting of some 2S6 Tunguskas. Really quickly, let me make sure to turn up the air in my office because I am burning alive right now. I, I hate to let you all know that, like just sharing some additional information. But I'm burning alive. But the 2S6 Tunguska is a fairly modern system for the Russian Federation and for Ukraine as well. Let me make sure to get you all to this, because this was put into service in 1982. It's considered a fairly modern system as far as the Russians are concerned, and it's probably the go-to system that everyone knows as a Russian anti-air system, especially if you played a game in your childhood or growing up called Battlefield 4. This was the Russians' anti-aircraft system in that game. But most importantly, it is a... Lesser version, pretty much, of the Pantsir. The Pantsir pretty much uses the turret of a Tunguska mounted onto a truck and is able to carry more missiles. It carries 12 anti-air missiles instead of 8, and it also has more ammo for the uh, quad 30mm autocannons that are mounted onto the turret. However, we were able to see that the Ukrainians, which have very few of these things, had theirs out in the field today somewhere, and a picture of it was taken and posted to TikTok. There is one of the 2S6 Tunguskas right there, and here is the other one. This one's actually what appears to be in a Russian army green, um, which is a darker green color compared to the one that we're seeing in the background. Still, really cool to see these two S6s. They are incredibly rare, and hopefully we'll get to see these things in use a little bit more. I believe the Ukrainians only have around 14 of these things in service, so it's a very small number, uh, and we rarely have ever seen them throughout the war, but hopefully they're able to find some good use of these here in the near future and help to uh, fortify some cities' air defenses if they have not already been fortified with those Tunguskas. Moving on from that, it's time for us to get on into the Russian casualty report. And, ooh! Oh! Oh, man. I don't even know how to read this one. It's so different. <laughs> it is completely different because, sadly, I hate to tell you all this, the Kiev Independent has had so many typos over recent days, uh, and, and thanks to Miss Disa, an amazing channel viewer, who has been helping us to clarify that after the stream, I've started to realize that Kiev Independent is not the most reliable place for us to get the casualty report numbers from daily. So we've actually switched over to getting the casualty report infographic from the Euromaidan Press. It's not as clean as the other one, but it does have accurate numbers, and it also breaks down uh, some of the numbers a little bit better. It includes submarines. It also includes uh, anti-aircraft systems, MLRSs, artillery systems, uh, armored personnel carriers, uh, vehicles and fuel tanks, uh, drones, and special equipment. But here on this on this one, the Bobcat Skid Steer has sadly been replaced with a walking house, which is literally Baba Yaga, uh, and also the Whoa. sled. Baba Yaga! <laughs> hey, man, I look, I'll take a walking house over a Bobcat. That's even sicker than a Bobcat, man, a walking house. But, but, 19, 19 special equipment vehicles were destroyed today. Holy moly! That's a pretty high number. Uh, but beyond that, absolutely great to see that the 19 Bobcat skid steers were destroyed, and we're keeping that joke alive, damn it. Um, but moving on from that, 1,050 Russian soldiers have been wounded and killed over the past 24 hours, along with 12 main battle tanks, 19 armored personnel carriers, 36 artillery pieces, 39 cruise missiles, 75 drones, and 57 supply trucks and armored cars. Overall, it was a fairly good day, and it's great to see that they were able to inflict a pretty decent amount of losses onto the Russian forces over the past 24 hours, and continuing to defend the front lines across all of Ukraine. Which moves us perfectly into those very front lines. But before we get into that, I want to make sure to add a little bit of additional news to allay any fears. 
we have been able to hear some great news coming from the area of the Dnipropetrovsk Dam inside of Zaporizhia. The situation is under control, the fires have been quelled, and there is no chance of a critical structural breach of the dam that will lead to the reservoir emptying and the dam having a critical collapse. We were able to get that news today, that is incredible news, but while that's the case, the gantry ways that the cranes use to lift the floodgates has been completely destroyed in one section, and that means that the towers can now no longer lift any, well, all of the floodgates along all of its track. It will only be able to lift a couple of them on the left, well, actually on the western side, and that's uh, the current situation of the dam, but still very good news to hear, and good to hear that the damage we originally thought was moderate to severe is actually light in reality. Moving on from that and into the area of northern Ukraine, we were able to see a Ukrainian Strela firing off an anti-air missile near to the front lines. Chad music ensues. When we see our Strela right there, and that's the sound that Strela makes, by the way. I'm not stupid. It's just the sound it makes. We see it lining up his target and firing right there. There goes the Strela. We're hitting its target right there and knocking it on out. Slow. And someone pointed out, can you not read? It says war backwards. I know, I know, but we like slaw better because it's funny. Uh, but moving on from that, we're now going to be getting on into our next little clip over here near the area of Bodanivsky, where we got to see the Ukrainian border guards taking out some Russian forces. And we see the Russians right here. They're running. But are they going to make it far? No. Oh, Blit! Everyone get under the shed! They cannot see us here, Blit. We are safe. But sadly, bam, drop vertically. They are not safe, Blit. And they're done. Not the night, Russian. Sleep well. They sleep very well. They sleep forever. But moving on from that, great to see that the border guards were able to take care of a couple of Russians in that area. And we're now going to be moving on down towards the uh, Kuzumivka area, where we got to see a very interesting mini-documentary made by uh, United24 Today, which is about the Stritzwagen 122, the license-built version of the Leopard 2 that is produced and operated by Sweden. And currently, a good amount of these uh, STRV 122s are inside of Ukraine. In case y'all are wondering, what does STRV stand for? It stands for Stritzwagen, which is the name that the Swedes give to their tanks. Uh, it pretty much just means tank in Swedish, but it sounds really cool. Stritzwagen, really neat. But anyways, here is the video. Swedish Stritzwagen 122 is one of the world's most advanced main battle tanks. It's an improved version of Leopard 2A5 and it has been in service in Ukraine for over half a year. Although only 10 of such tanks were delivered to Ukraine, they have been doing a massive amount of work on the battlefield. We are super lucky to catch one of them in the meantime, as the crew has been working non-stop. In 2014, I saw our guys on tanks storming, working, and I loved it. I thought then that it was my dream. Well, that dream came true. After fighting as an infantryman in 2014 and reworked as a truck driver in Europe, in 2023 his journey took him to Sweden to train as a loader of the Stritzwagen 122. In just two months he and his mates had to learn one and a half years worth of information. Since then Andriy has grown to become the fastest loader in his tank company. It's a breaching tank. We approached the invaders at 400 meters. As soon as they see us, they run away. <laughs> as previously mentioned, the Stritzwagen is a modified Leopard produced by Sweden. 
If it weren't for Barracuda camouflage, they would be very hard to distinguish one from another. So, how are they different? Wait, wait, whoa, was that thing going in reverse that fast? Yeah, it was going in reverse Let's that fast. That. Look at this thing. Wait, hang on, hang on. I think you may be confused the there. Is a Are you talking about right Leopard here? Produced by Sweden. No, no, the next one. If it weren't for Barracuda camouflage, the they would be very hard oh, to... Oh, yeah. That yeah, one. the thing is booking it, man. <laughs> like, Jeez. <laughs> that is crazy, man. How many reverse uh, gears does that thing have? I think it's only too short of how many forward gears it has. So I think it's like six reverse gears and eight forward gears. Dang, that is nuts. To distinguish one from another. So, how are they different? Just like with Swedish cars, like Volvo and Scania, it's the same as with this tank. It differs from the German one in that it has reinforced armor. It is safer. We have already been hit near Makivka. We were hit twice in the front, and we survived. The hatches are stronger. The armor is thicker, and it moves well. It's maneuverable. So does this additional armor give you more confidence on the combat mission? It gives you a good feeling because you realize that you're protected. Of course, it won't protect you from everything, but it is what it is. With the introduction of drone warfare, many believe that the tank era is over. Such a massive vehicle is too easy to stop with a suicide drone or even a mine. However, after six months of combat deployment through trial and error, the troops learned how to operate while avoiding those dangers. Uh, you need all types of weapon to, to move forward. And uh, the tanks, it's the uh, main fist of this moment. So, uh, yeah, you can use uh, infantry, yeah, but you will have losses, a lot of losses. But uh, inside the thing, uh, it's quite safe. All along the front line, wow, Russian look at forces that are right there. That thing while the Spitzwagen hold the line. It is only now that the crew has taken part in their first tank against tank fights, which confirms how aggressive the enemy is at the moment. The unit has just returned from a combat mission where they narrowly avoided being shot by an enemy tank. Despite Andre seeing no end to this, he remains positive and grateful for the Swedish support to Ukraine. What's written here? Uh, it says Slava Ukraini. Our Swedish instructors wrote it. Uh, could I, could I tell him something? Georgiu, привет. Францу, привет. Все нормально. Спасибо большое за то, что вы нас научили много чему за эти месяца. То есть очень большое уважение к вам. За нас не переживайте. Все хорошо. That's pretty cool. You got to say uh, hello to the instructors like that. That's pretty sick. Yeah, that's it. That's the uh, Stritzvagen equivalent of, hi, mom. Hi, dad. <laughs> it's, 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 but still, really cool <laughs> to see. Uh, but with that, that's the end of the clip and showing an amazing Swedish main battle tank that has been provided to the Ukrainian armed forces and has been used in the northeastern area for quite some time. Moving on from that clip and out down into the Kremena area, we were also able to see that they were able to hit an APC today in the Kremena forest. I know, exciting news. Check it out. Here comes the drone. This was the 12th Azov Special Brigade, that uh, Special Purpose Brigade that hit this MTLB. But we can see the first drone hit the hatch. We can see the second one coming in after the infantry have long since run away and hitting the MTLB on the side. We can now see a third drone coming in to help further the job of destroying more Russian vehicles. This one being a T-80. We now see them coming on down onto another Russian army vehicle and hitting that one as well. We can see the next drone lining up for its attack. And we see it getting hit right there in some kind of uh, particulate flying off. We don't know what that was. Maybe a smoke grenade launcher that ended up exploding. And with that, that's the end of the clip. But great to see the Azov continuing on their strikes 
and making sure to put the Russians in a disadvantage in this area of the line. With that, we're now going to be moving on. Oh, uh, enforcer, enforcer, real quick, just a piece of breaking news here just to cover it while it's happening. Um, like, like everyone probably is aware of by now, that Russia is launching a major, another major attack uh, on Ukraine, and every single region of Ukraine is in the red right now. Uh, it looks like the air defense is being uh, successful in shooting down the missiles that are going toward Kiev. It looks like uh, Moscow is trying to overwhelm their defenses in Kiev once again. Uh, but this time, it looks like they're shooting uh, missiles toward Lviv as well, which is obviously there near the border with Poland. So there seems to be concern right now as to whether or not those missiles are actually going to hit their targets uh, or are they going off target. There's some panic about that at the moment, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. And we will make sure to keep an eye on it. Thank you, Matthew, for sharing that little update with us as we move on our way out of the Kremena Forest and down towards the area of Bakhmut. Over the past 24 hours, this front line has been largely inactive, according to video and picture evidence, and we have seen no front line changes to indicate that any major action is producing any kind of positive or meaningful results. But moving on out of the Bakhmut area, and then further on down and into the Avdivka direction, we were able to see that near Krasnarivka, another Russian APC got detonated and blown to pieces. But here's the clip. They're playing the trap remix as it runs over a mine. Oh, and it's done for. Good night and sleep tight. Oh, my. Many Russians sleep. And we can see the fires continuing to burn. And that little clip right there showed us a very nice clip of an MTLB running over an anti-tank mine. Moving on from that clip and into our next one, we were able to see the 82nd Brigade hit some Russian forces. You see our Russians running through the field with happy music playing right behind them as the happy drone comes up and ha helps them to have happy fun time in Ukraine. And there they go. They're just running along, uh, frolicking in the fields. The drone's chasing them around. Why in the world was that Russian right here, Matthew, on the right side, running like he really was whimsical? Look at him. He's like, ah, wait, wait for me. Ah. You know, it's like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, he said, oh, my. <laughs> Oh, my. And we can see the drone still chasing the guy. Oh, <laughs> man, this this uh, drone operator is literally just toying with him at this point. They're running around in circles, like, going nowhere. Oh, my Lord. Oh, and he, he picked the whimsical guy. <laughs> Wait for me. <laughs> oh, God, it's getting close. <laughs> and he's, uh, oh. Oh, my goodness. Well, it appears that it is not a good time. But with that, that's the end of that clip. And showing that the 82nd Brigade was able to take out some more Russian forces in the area in between Pervomyske and Marinka. Moving on from that and into the direction of Mikilski, we were able to see that the 72nd Brigade was also targeting Russian armor and taking it out down here. We can see right here what appears to be a T-80BV with a coke cage and a mine pile attached to it, and a second T-80BV as well uh, that also has a coke cage and a mine plow attached. So pretty much the exact same lo uh, loadout for each tank. We can see the drone go into the driver's hatch of the first T-80 and hitting it dead on, possibly uh, starting an ammo fire inside. We now see the next drone coming in and hitting the driver's hatch of the T-80 BVM on the left side. We see the uh, T-80 BVM on the left has been successfully hit and the fire has now started inside of the compartment. And we can see a third drone going for the right side T-80 and trying to set a fire on the ammunition for that one. We now see the fires beginning to consume both tanks as the right side has a rapid uh, ammunition burn off. And the left side continues to burn at a nice smoldering pace. We now see one of them just had an ammunition explosion. We, we're not sure which one at the moment. But we can see that pieces of the tank are spread out along the entirety of the field. We now see that both of them ended up having a turret toss at some point, and both of them have been completely destroyed. Huge credit to the 72nd Brigade's drone forces that were able to conduct this attack successfully and knock these Russian forces out. Moving on further down the lines and into the area of Novomayorsk, we were able to see that the Ukrainians were able to hit even more Russians with the help of the 81st Brigade. Pretty cool intro. It's a griffin with a bloody sword blood. You see Griffin with feather sword, red feather. <laughs> but we can see the drone coming in, finding its choice target of the day. And oh, it's going to find it. 
and it looks like it's found. This drone is called F-16 Bliat. It's, uh, it's a good drone. Oh, look at him. Oh, oh. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, firework time to a celebration. And I don't know what the hell was coming off the guy's backpack, but apparently he was carrying around fireworks for a celebration. And it appears that the celebration was held early. But you now see the next drone coming on in, trying to find its next target. And we see they found it, and they hit it. Now you see the cackling skulls. <laughs> Uh, flying their drones around, great to see. And a huge credit to the 81st Brigade for conducting these attacks and successfully hitting Russian forces in the area. Moving on from that and into Melitopol, we were able to hear of some kind of a deep strike conducted by Ukraine that has most likely wiped out an entire platoon of Russian forces in the area. We were told that this was apparently conducted by guerrillas and uh, in the Directorate of Intelligence of Ukraine. We have not been able to confirm much more than the specific report in this one still picture from the supposed attack, but still really interesting to see and interesting to know the partisan activity is still going on in the rear lines in occupied Ukraine. Moving on from that, and further on over and into the uh, Harrison or Dnipro River area, we were able to get a large amount of news today, more so than we ever get. Oh, which... oh Enforcer, Enforcer, huge, huge news here. Uh, this is preliminary, so take it with a grain of salt, but allegedly uh, three Russian cruise missiles have may have just crossed over into Polish airspace near the town of uh, Horodolo, uh, according to Ukrainian channels. That just came in one minute ago. Um, and I'm seeing some other reports popping up about it as well. So I'm unsure if that's actually happening. Uh, but there are a bunch of alerts going off to, uh, to tell people in Poland to watch out. The missiles are right there on the border and they may have crossed over. Uh, really quickly, can we get the name of that town again? It's uh, H-O-R-O-D-L-O. H-O-R-O-D-R-L-O. -O -O. Wait, hang on. Is that, isn't that that a major city? Um, let me check. Let's see here. I'm trying to get some more confirmation on this because it just came in a second ago. Let's see. Poland has uh, launched F-16s into the air to intercept the missiles. Uh, so it looks like Poland's taking action uh, to potentially take them down as we speak. Uh, can you give me the name of that town one more time and spell it for me? It is. Let's see here. It is uh, H-R-O. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. H-O-R-O-D-L-O. -O. All right. So let's see where this location of this town is. This is directly on the Ukrainian border. It appears to border uh, the literal Ukrainian border. The only thing dividing it is a tree line and a small creek, which we can't get the name of at the moment. But it is just north. Actually, it's incredibly north of the Lviv area. It's pretty much parallel to Lutsk uh, on the Ukrainian-Polish border. So we're going to be making sure to try and keep some updates on this. It appears that one of these missiles may have been trying to attack Volodymyr inside of Ukraine and may have ended up overshooting and going for the town of Horolotlo. Uh, I would definitely... Oh. Mm -hmm. you go ahead. Also, another quick update here. Uh, Polish locals are uh, in the town of uh, Osserdo, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, on the border with Ukraine and claiming to have heard loud noises similar to a jet aircraft uh, over the town within the last few minutes. So that could be the Polish F-16s that have been scrambled to shoot down the missiles, uh, or it could be perhaps another aircraft of someone else. Uh, nobody's really sure at the moment, but uh, residents in Poland are hearing those loud noises as we speak, uh, and it appears to be a pretty bad situation going down near the border uh, of Poland. And can you give me the, uh, the spelling of that town name so that way we can find that town? It's O-S-E-R-D-O-W. All right. Sadly, I don't know how to pronounce this town name either, but this is actually a fairly good ways away from the other village, uh, the village of Horodlo up here, just parallel to uh, Lutsk. This is actually farther down in parallel to the town of Horokiv, uh, which is about maybe 20 miles south of Lutsk. Uh, so this is an entirely different location, and once again, directly on the Ukrainian-Polish border. So it may not be uh, Polish F-16s that these, uh, these villagers are hearing, that may actually be Ukrainian uh, aircraft that are airborne at the moment flying on the other side of the border, considering that they are so close to Ukrainian airspace. It's really hard to tell whose aircraft those would actually be that they're hearing. 
Um, but nevertheless, we are hearing some very interesting, very concerning news at the moment, and hopefully we'll be able to keep you all updated as the stream continues to go on live. Uh, but moving on from that news, and thank you for sharing that with us, Matthew. If you have any updates, feel more than free to interrupt any bit of news that I'm going through so that way we can get the breaking update as it's coming out at that very moment. Um, but moving it, Indeed. And also, one disclaimer I want to say, this is coming from two different sources and allegedly from three different Ukrainian channels. So, uh, of course, it is preliminary. Take it with a grain of salt. But that is what we're hearing right now. And I'm waiting. I'm scouring every channel I know right now and trying to ask my sources as well. Is there any confirmation of that? So uh, I'll let you know if I get any more uh, confirmation of that story. And we're actually going to be moving on from that. And thank you once again for sharing that story. And we're going to be moving back on into the area of the left bank of the Dnipro River. At the moment, we can currently go into a battlefield analysis of what has been happening here over the past 24 hours. Uh, and hopefully we can get some more news in the background of what else has been going on. According to Deep State, uh, well, yeah, according to the Deep State map, the Russians have overtaken Krenke. We believe that to be a, a false claim because we still see that the 36th Marine Brigade controls the town of Krenke for the large part. And it also appears that they've now updated it to show that the Russians are in control of Kazachi Lahri as well, although once again we are assuming that that is not the case. However, we have seen that the Russians have dropped fab, uh, 500 bombs onto the town of Tokarivka directly across on the other side of the Dnipro River. We can see these fabs landing here in the middle of this town and exploding um, as this clip continues. And also, Enforcer, another quick update. We have gotten confirmation from the, it uh, looks like the Polish government. Let me verify that that is the account. Uh, yes, it appears to be a government-affiliated account with the Polish government uh, that F-16s have indeed been scrambled, uh, several of them, uh, and they're going toward the, uh, the border of western Ukraine. And they may be there already, uh, based on the sounds of this post. Uh, so it's unclear if they're actually shooting missiles down or they're there to simply monitor it. Uh, but clearly something has crossed over the border uh, from Ukraine, or otherwise those jets would not have gone up, uh, because it seems like a pretty large scrambling of uh, thank you very much once again for the update. Hopefully we are able to get a little bit clearer picture here in a moment. But moving on from that and continuing on with our analysis for the meantime, we were able to see that the Ukrainians were able to attack and destroy a Russian drone operator's hideout on the left bank of the Dnipro as well. We're sadly going to have to mute this clip, but in the meantime, I will make sure to go over the news that we've been able to find while we've been live on air. According to the information that we were finding, the current Russian missile attack is actually triggering a Polish air defense response as some of these missiles appear to have possibly passed over their targets and are heading into Poland at this moment. We have not been able to confirm whether these are currently impacting Poland or whether they are just flying incredibly close to the Polish border, but it has produced such a dangerous situation that the Polish Air Force has currently mobilized F-16s and scrambled them to try and protect Polish airspace and attempt to shoot down any missiles that may be crossing over the Ukrainian-Polish border. In the meantime, we can see that the drone hideout was severely destroyed today by multiple attacks from the uh, Ukrainian drone forces. When you see that building literally being leveled, we can now see fires erupting. And with that, that's the end of the clip but showing us a little bit of the activity that was going on in the area as the Ukrainian Marines continue to try and destroy the Russians' abilities to attack them with their drone forces. Moving on from that and into our last clip in the left bank of the Dnipro River area, we were able to see that the Ukrainian border guards were successful in shooting down a Shahed 131 or a 136 with ground fire. Here is the clip. Chad music ensues. We can see the ground fire continuing to go up into the skies. We see them continuing to conduct ground fire. And we can now see one of the drones that they were able to take down right here in the broad daylight. Once again, another success by Ukrainian air defense in showing that their small arms forces are getting accurate enough to reliably shoot down Shahed 136s that are seen in Ukrainian skies. Moving on from that, 
that is our last bit of news here in the southern area of Ukraine. And it's time for us to go north to the speech from President Zelensky. But I'd highly encourage you all to stick around as we are going to continue to get live updates on the ongoing air attack that is occurring um, in right now in Ukraine and may possibly be breaching Polish airspace. Once again, I want to make this quite clear. We are not entirely sure if it is breaching Polish, uh, Polish airspace at the moment, but the Polish Air Force has scrambled F-16s to be near the border and prepare to shoot down any Russian missiles that are crossing the border. With that, we're now moving into Kyiv for the speech from President Volodymyr Zelensky here on day 759 of the war. And so, without further ado, here is the speech. Speech! Speech! Громадах нашої держави працюють комунальні служби, ремонтні бригади, енергетики. Продовжується ліквідація наслідків російської терористичної атаки, що сталося у п'ятницю. Другу добу безперервно люди працюють. На цей час майже всюди повернуто нормальне енергопостачання. У Кремі проблеми були сьогодні в нашій Одесі, були аварійні відключення. Робиться все, щоб нормалізувати ситуацію в Харкові. На жаль, поки що дуже складно. Сьогодні був черговий ракетний удар з Росії. Це щоденно триває ці обстріли. І кожен, хто працює для збереження нормального життя в Харкові, в області, в інших прикордонних містах, в громадах, всі справжні герої. Я дякую кожному рятувальнику нашої ДСНС України, всім працівникам енергетичних компаній, які задіяні поліцейським, місцевим службам, волонтерам, усім, хто допомагає. Дякую за вашу відданість захисту людей. Хочу окремо відзначити і подякувати фахівцям у Франківській області, Вінницькій, Хмельницькій, Сумщина, Полтавщина, наша Дніпровщина, Заборіжжя. Я дякую за оперативну роботу. Сьогодні я отримав звіти з регіонів, від глави уряду, від МВС, звичайно, від наших військових. Дуже важливо, що держава забезпечує системне реагування на кожен такий російський удар. Хочу відзначити усіх лідерів держав, керівників міжнародних інституцій, усіх наших партнерів, які висловились цими днями на підтримку України. Важливо спільно діяти кожного разу, коли ракети та дрони намагаються знищити наше життя. Діяти, щоб зменшити потенціал терору заблокувати його. Зокрема, це стосується ППО, обов'язково санкцій. В усіх цих іскандерах, кінжалах, інших російських ракетах, в шахедах десятки компонентів, які завозяться для терору з інших країн світу. В ракетах, що були використані за одну цю атаку проти України, проти нашої енергосистеми, було щонайменше 300 типів компонентів з 10 країн. Разом із шахедами загалом щонайменше 7,5 тисяч компонентів. Кожен з них – це порушення санкційних режимів проти Росії. Кожен – це чи є намагання зробити гроші на знищенні життів. Потрібно це зупинити. Ще одне – те, що сталося вчора в Москві. Очевидно, і Путін, і інші покидки просто намагаються звалити все це на когось іншого. У них завжди однакові методи. Це вже було, і підірвані будинки були, і розстріли, і вибухи, і завжди вони звинувачують інших. Вони прийшли в Україну, спалюють наші міста, і Україну ж намагаються звинувати. Вони катують, гвалтують наших людей, і їх же звинувачують. Вони сюди на українську землю, нагнали сотні тисяч терористів своїх, воюють проти нас, і їм все одно, що відбувається всередині їхньої ж країни. Вчора ще все це сталося, і ця нікчема абсолютно Путін, замість того, щоб займати своїми громадянами Росії, звертатись до них, добу мовчав, думав, як це притягнути до України. Все абсолютно передбачено, Тих сотен тысяч россиян, которые сейчас бывают на украинской земле, точно вистачило бы, чтобы остановить любых террористов. И если россияне готовы мовчки вмирати, крокуса, а не ставить никаких вопросов своим спецслужбам, то Путин еще не одну такую ситуацию спробує повернуть на пользу своей особистой власти. Террористы всегда должны програвати. Я дякую кожному і кожному, 
хто справді захищає життя. Дякую усім нашим людям, які б'ються проти терору. І ми маємо усім, усім світом захищатися від тих, хто вважає людей просто витратним матеріалом. Слава Україні! And Hiram Slava. Hiram Slava. And with that, that is the end of the speech from President Volodymyr Zelensky here on day 759 of the war in Ukraine. But really quickly, I believe that we may have additional news updates from Matthew at the moment on the ongoing situation near the Ukrainian-Polish border. All right, so we haven't learned very much since the last time we reported on the live incident, uh, but we do know for a fact that Russia has launched a massive missile attack, and the missiles have been shot down over Kyiv and also Lviv as well. We know for a fact that the Polish Air Force scrambled several F-16s, and they were heard over several villages, which we looked at just a moment ago on the map. Um, and according to several Ukrainian back channels, uh, those missiles did indeed fly over some border towns of Poland. We're not hearing of any impacts or any uh, detonations in Poland, but they may have skirted right over uh, Polish territory to get to other parts of Ukraine. Uh, that appears to be the situation at the moment. And of course, that would not be the first time this has occurred during the war at all. Uh, but once again, it is a big escalation for a missile or any type of weapon to fly over a NATO country because that could trigger something unfortunate. There could be an accident, and there also could be uh, an interpretation by Poland that it could be an act of war. So uh, we're waiting for more information to come out, but right now, that's all we have. And with that, I hope we were able to address that well. And in the meantime, we're going to be moving on into the question segment. We're going to get to talk to all of y'all. And this is the funnest time of the night for me because we get to uh, speak to each and every one of y'all that have been here for the news so far. Uh, I once again want to thank everyone who has been here tonight so far. 8.7 thousand people are still here right now, which is unbelievable. At the peak tonight, there was nearly 11,200 of y'all who were here at one single moment, and so far, nearly 70,000 people have watched this stream already as we're live right now. We are entirely honored that each of y'all found this to be a quality source of news that y'all could tune into and listen to the war's uh, events over the day, and I hope that we're able to continue to get y'all the uh, updates and events that are still going on at this moment while we're live on air right now. Uh, but with that, Matthew, take it away. All right, so we do have one last poll to address, and it says the Ukraine war is heating up very quickly, and that's an understatement, and Russia and Ukraine are going blow for blow, and what are your thoughts? 44% said Russia will end up acting rash eventually. 35% said Ukraine is going to destabilize Russia. 11% said everything will remain status quo. And in my opinion, with the way things are going for Russia, I have a feeling that Russia is probably going to end up acting rash, and I don't mean they're going to start launching nukes all over the place. That's not what I mean whatsoever. But they will probably call up a major mobilization like we mentioned a moment ago, which will be justified by that quote-unquote uh, terror attack on Moscow that occurred just a day or two ago. So I think that's going to be the likely option because I think over time, if this keeps up at this rate, Ukraine is going to destabilize uh, Russia as a whole. And then that's going to really, really mess them up, uh, not only with the war in Ukraine, but also as a stable government as well. If you can call Russia stable at all at this point, um, if you can. But Enforcer, what say you? I would have to say that this is most likely going to end up uh, uh, making the Russians act rashly. And I saw someone say, How's this, how are the Russians not already acting rash? Well, they are, but there is a way that they can act more rash is by uh, trying to declare a full-on war, transferring into a war economy, and then uh, bringing forward mass conscription. Uh, that would be a way to go pretty rash compared to even what they're doing right now. And I have a feeling that that's not entirely out of the picture because the Russians really can do a little bit more, just a little bit more. I don't think they're going to be using tactical nuclear weapons. I don't think that's ever going to really happen in reality. Uh, but I do think they're going to continue moving towards trying to get into a full war economy and starting mass conscription. I think this may be that next step that they were needing to try and justify such a thing. Um, but with that, I hope that does address that the best I can. And with that, we're moving on to the next one. All right, and that was our last poll to address. So we're now moving back into our Super Chat segment. And up first, we have a very generous $50 donation from Conferelli, one of the Alabama hey! viewers, a legend on the channel. And thank you very much for that support. He says, happy LSA Day. And this community is built with awesome people, a.k.a. Leaf Springs. And you got to have a strong base and pick a good one from the live chat. And you gotta have a strong base, Conferelli. You gotta. And thank you for your 10th Super Chat ever to the channel, Conferelli. Thank you so much for helping this thing to keep on running. And thank you for wishing us a happy LSA Day on LSA Day. That moment 
on the stream, I believe, that happened way back then. It's coming up in about 10 minutes' time. That's when the LSA actually formed, was at the hour and 54-minute mark, I believe, of that stream, which is unbelievable to think that at that exact same time two years ago, the LSA first came into being for the first time ever on on air. Uh, and I got to thank you so much for uh, being one of those people, Conferelli, that has joined us along the way and has stuck with us through thick and thin, of course, being one of our Alabama at least Spring Army viewers and being one of the folks that I've been able to meet in person. Uh, it's absolutely incredible to know that you're here with us tonight celebrating such a big event for this channel and for the community. Uh, I also got to thank you so much uh, for saying that uh, the LSA is a strong base and the channel has to have a strong base because it's entirely true, that kind of a statement. Uh, many channels out there do not have a strong base. Uh, and it's it's always funny because you can always see how envious many people are of the amazing community that this channel has because this community has been called in derogatory terms a cult, uh, which I find absolutely hilarious that our community is so... Uh, tightly knit and so strong that some people who wish they had communities like this one would call it cult-like. It's nothing like a cult. It is the biggest and greatest organization that we've ever seen so far on the face of the internet that ends up supporting Ukraine and ends up supporting the Western cause. And I thank you so much for being a part of that cause, Conferelli, and being a part of the Lee Spring Army. I hope you enjoy the flags because they are going to be coming soon. And I love to see, Conferelli, that you switched out your profile picture to be of the LSA flag. It is the LSA Eagle, which is incredibly cool. And also, thank you so much once again for making those neat little leather patches for us. I actually have mine in my hand right now because I keep it here on my desk. And that was so cool of you. And we we're greatly appreciative of that. I love it, too. It was really cool. That was some really good craftsmanship on that. High quality craftsmanship. Uh, but beyond that, we will pick a good one from the live. Uh, but still, thank you so much once again, Conferelli. I want you to know that greatly. And also, um, just to just give you an update really quickly, because I don't think I've sent anything back to you on something that you suggested over a private message. I'm, I'm going to be looking into my schedule and seeing if that day is free. Uh, hopefully it will be, and I, I'm leaning more so it probably will be, uh, but I'll have to double check and make sure the closer I get to that day. But still... Thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the live chat sponsored by Conferelli goes to Eugene Minton, who says, do you think hey. the Russians will attempt to seize TV stations and such to use as communications relays for the military? Um, I'm doubting it because TV stations have a certain kind of a transmission uh, form, which is television, which isn't really encrypted at all. Uh, the military, even the Russian military, requires uh, encrypted communications for the most part. Uh, and very rarely in instances like the 2008 Georgian War, uh, because of failures of Russian radio systems on the front lines, they ended up using landlines, although that was uh, a terrible thing that the Russians even knew was a major problem. So with that, I'd have to say they're probably not going to commandeer TV stations, and I don't think they would commandeer any kind of civil broadcast system at all, because those don't have the kind of encryption that the Russian military would most likely require. And so with that, I hope that does address that live chat well, and thank you so much once again, um, Conferelli, for the massive support and helping this channel to keep on running. I think that is the biggest support that you've ever given this channel beyond getting two flags, and i got to thank you so much for that once again and being an absolute channel legend through and through. Uh, and so with that, thank you so much once again. I hope, that I, I hope I addressed that the best I could, and we are on to the next one. All right, and our next Super Chat is going to go to, guess who? It's going to Leora Avagile, who puts hey! in a $20 donation. And thank you very much, Leora, as well for that support. And she said, uh, great job, Enforcers. You definitely called Putin out on the blame game. And crazy how uh, ISIS took full responsibility and he still points the finger at Ukraine. And it's pretty stupid, in my opinion, trying to blame Ukraine. It smells fishy. And I got to thank you so much for the support. Uh, and I got to agree with you. It is a very weird thing um, how, how Putin is trying to structure this because we've already heard that the that ISIS did it. I mean, 100% ISIS did it with no help or involvement from anyone else. And already, we were calling it yesterday, when it was happening in my video, that this is most likely some kind of a false flag attack. Or even if it isn't, the Russians were going to try and structure this into being a false flag attack so that way they could blame Ukraine. And, so, you know... I just got to say, Lior, I, I hate to say this stuff because it sounds so narcissistic, but I'm going to have to say it. I called that dead on the nail and people were absolutely bashing us 
uh, yesterday for saying that because people were like, um, ISIS already claimed it. Um, obviously Ukraine can't be blamed. And I was like, I don't know y'all. I was like, you know, they're going to try and connect this any way they can. I'd said, I said, they might try and connect it through the Ingushetian Liberation Army. They might try and make some kind of connection where it looks like Ukraine is involved in this. And they did. They didn't do it in my way, though. They didn't do it where they tried to connect them with the Ingushetian Liberation Army. They ended up connecting them directly to Ukraine by saying that they tried to flee from Moscow and straight to the Ukrainian border where they were going to cross and then go and enter into safety on the other side. That is something that I have to say we hit dead on the nail yesterday. It's, it's, it wasn't that hard to see. The Russians are clearly looking for any kind of an excuse to escalate at this moment. And that was the best one they had. They're going to find a way to tie that to Ukraine any way they can. And we're seeing that right now. And so I got to thank you so oh, much. Oh man, I, I, I knew the moment that I heard that story coming out of the terrorist attack and seeing the, the level of atrocity that it was. I was uh, talking to a buddy who I, I went to school with in university in political science and we both said the exact same thing. We knew exactly what was about to happen and predicted it. And also you did as well. And pretty much everyone else did as well. It was pretty much Russian playbook uh, word by word. Um, and that, the exact thing happened. He's going around spewing this crap about how Ukraine pulled it off and how they tried to help the terrorists escape. And they're going to try to use that to justify a further mobilization. It's like uh, it's literally like their playbook. Uh, and yes, it is 100%. Uh, and, and someone uh, in the chat said, I thought you said it was a false flag. Yeah, it's a false flag because the regardless of who conducted it, the Russians are using it as a catalyst to blame Ukraine and try and further escalate the war with them. It was a false flag. Uh, and I believe that it is also a false flag because of the argument I brought up yesterday. For some reason, at one of the most prestigious uh, concert halls in Moscow, there was absolutely no armed security. We even heard that the armed security ran away from the building during the firefight. None of them tried to stop the gunmen. We also saw that the amount of casualties that was caused was incredibly high. These people were using Russian weapons through and through the AK-12, which is pretty much impossible to get outside of Russia. And also, uh, while I'm saying that, there are AK-12s in the United States, but those are the semi-automatic versions that were shipped into the, America, uh, into the United States in somewhat questionable ways. But beyond that, the AK-12 is pretty much a Russian platform. To get your hand on one of these things, you would either have to be a Ukrainian soldier that ended up taking one off of a dead Russian, which happens a lot, or you would have to be the Russian government giving these guns to these guys. Uh, and so that is something that I noticed that was really odd. And on top of that, how uh, coordinated they were was very odd as well. Because seeing any other terrorist attacks conducted by ISIS, they are never this uh, organized or uh, performed this well. And on top of that, usually it's pretty ad hoc stuff. You know, throwing a bomb in a concert hall or driving a truck through a crowd. It's never anything this organized where you get a group of five or four gunmen, run them into a building and start mowing people down like it's the Remember No Russian campaign from Call of Duty. I mean, that, that nothing like that ever happens anywhere. You know, not to try and reference a video game because it was an absolute tragedy, but it literally pretty much went down that same line of reasoning and is being used by the Russians to try and um, more so say that this was a false flag conducted by Ukraine. Uh, and with that, I hope that does address also, it. Hmm? Also, speaking of the, the terrorists that pulled off that attack in Moscow, I've heard that uh, some of them are like developing like sudden like hearing problems and things like that. Like I have a feeling they're going to start airing like commercials, like saying if you or a loved one has like ex experienced hearing problems after an attack and they're going to let those guys be the only four that like make claims on it. Yeah, something like that, probably. Um, yeah, but, man, that was, that was brutal. Uh, I don't know how many people saw that video, but uh, the FSB were uh, all had their phones out recording uh, that little interrogation, and they did the they did a number on that guy. Yeah, they did a number on him. Um, on some people, some people out there are saying it's the most uh, disturbing video they've seen, and to that I have to say, oh my sweet summer child, you have hardly seen anything. Uh, we've behind the scenes here on this channel we've seen things that are truly gut-wrenching um and and that was actually nowhere close to the worst thing i've ever seen that was actually very tame more so on the weenie hut jr side of bad videos coming out of the war uh but it was it was a pretty interesting little thing the way they did the guy uh because because they pretty much like you know they, they sliced and diced and then they said you would have a good ear to tell us where the the way the other guys went and what they're doing and i'm like Wait a minute, these guys are like cracking puns on top of this? I was like, huh. I was like, interesting. But anyways, uh, with that, with that out of the way, uh, pretty interesting. And also another thing is, is that 
you know, regardless of what these people did, which was damn near, well, it was damn heinous, uh, it, it seems a little bit barbaric that the FSB would start doing heinous things in return. Because here in the United States, if something like that happened, the cops would have a massive stand down, probably forcefully fling the guy to the ground and then cuff him and then put him in the back of a car. And then the prisoners inside of the jail, or well, not inside of the jail, inside of wherever the guy's being held might do something to him. But even then, that's uh, a little unlikely until he's sentenced and put in prison. So, you know, once again, the Russians are showing that they are truly the uh, civilized people of the world uh, going around and cutting off ears and popping eyeballs out. But anyways. You know, and also I had some people actually asking me earlier because I covered all of that stuff. Not not that particular topic, but I covered everything else in the short war video earlier today. And they were like, how come you didn't include that video in the war summary? I was like, well, if we included that video in the war summary, we'd probably get not only restricted from YouTube, but also probably permanently banned off of it as well. Because that was like a video... Uh, that really belongs on something like Live Leak uh, or something like that. It was uh, a pretty atrocious one. And it was on Twitter for a while until they took it down from there as well because it was so atrocious. Uh, they they didn't back. even let it stay up on Twitter. Oh, they brought it back? Yeah, I saw it, I saw it earlier. They brought it back. I was like, oh, look, there it is again. And then, the, you know, he, oh, went, he went, and they were like, you have one year to left. Tell us. And I was like, oh, damn. It's like, there it is again. Uh, but anyways, with that, um, I would have to say, getting back to Leora's Super Chat, which we haven't gotten done addressing, addressing yet, it is pretty stupid for the Russians to try and blame Ukraine. It doesn't make any logical sense, but they're still going to do it anyways because they have a war to try and further their aims in, and that is one of the best vehicles they've been given to have that chance. And so with that, thank you so much once again for support, Leora uh, Avigail, and once again helping this channel to keep on running. And, of course, long live the LSA, and thank you for being here on LSA Day. With that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to The Planet is Dying, who puts in a $20 donation. Hey! And very dramatic as always, but thank you very much for that support. They said, Happy Creation Day, uh, Enforcer and Enforcer Matt, and you guys are great, and sending much love from New York City Oblast. And thank you so much for the support. The planet is dying! Oh! Uh, but thank you so much once again for helping this channel to keep on running, and thank you for saying uh, such kind words. I love to know that you think we're great. Uh, we try our best. Uh, we're just people, after all. We just do our thing. We're just chilling. Uh, but thank you so much for sending some love from the New York City Oblast, the biggest city in the United States of America. I think it's home to, like, uh, 8 million people, and I think uh, over 10 million people in the metropolitan area, it is the biggest city here. Way bigger than even the state of Alabama, just the city of New York alone. Um, but still, really cool. And I gotta thank you so much once again for helping this channel to keep on running, being here with us for such a long time, uh, and just making this thing a reality. You've actually helped out a lot over the length of this channel's history, The Planet is Dying, uh, in helping us to keep this thing rolling. And you've been around, I think, for the for the first LSA day, uh, the second LSA day, and now the third LSA day that we're having tonight uh, on the second year of existence of the Lee Spring Army. And so with that, Thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And of course, Slavo Ukraini and long live the Lee Spring Army. And with that, we are on to the next one. And our next one goes to Tim Swenson, who puts in a $20 donation and says, congrats on keeping LSA together for so long, even when it became too much at times. And it keeps saying, screw you to the bots and the naysayers. And I've been around since way back and like daily, been broke. And thank you so much, Tim Swenson. I know you've been here for a long time, uh, forever. I've seen your name a long time ago. I've continued to see it, and I see it tonight, right now. Uh, and I got to thank you so much for uh, in appreciating how much we've tried to keep the LSA together. Other people have torn their communities to shreds over things that they've done, things that they've said. Uh, a lot of people out there have tried to weaponize their communities uh, to try and target other ones and take them down. And the Lee Spring Army has largely risen above that and just continues to truck on along doing what we do. Uh, and it's, it's actually incredible how cohesive this community really is. Uh, because when we look at many other ones out there, we've watched some of them just utterly collapse. I mean, well, I'm literally talking about just within the last, I think, week and a half. We watched one community of one channel literally just collapse inwards on itself and implode, and it's still currently doing that right now. Um, and that's not really the first time that that's happened, but this is the biggest time that's happened for them. Uh, and the fact that the Lee Spring Army has been able to survive for two straight years now 
uh it's it's truly a feat uh that we we can't even really believe i can't believe that the channel survived that long and i can't believe that the community has survived that long intact in the original way it was formed uh and i i, I gotta say thank you so much for enjoying the way we just run this thing um as we are we don't try and change for anyone we don't try and do anything um that we wouldn't do we are who we are and we represent ourselves to y'all exactly how we are off air this is how we are on air uh, and I love that we keep on saying screw you to the bots and the naysayers. Uh, there's been plenty of bots that have come around, and there's been plenty, a load of naysayers uh, that have tried to attack this channel and take it down. And even through that, and even through them sometimes looking like they nearly succeeded, this channel and its community was able to bounce back and just keep on trucking forward. And that's what is truly amazing about the Lee Spring Army, is that the belief that the Lee Spring Army will never die is what actually keeps it alive for all of this time is that people truly believe that the Lee Spring Army will never die and it never will as long as people have a belief that the LSA is strong and it's one of the best communities in the world that supports the Western cause and supports Ukraine. Uh, and so with that, thank you so much once again for the support. I hope that does address that well, Tim. And with that, we are on to the next one. And I saw uh, Seb SK say in the live chat, do you have any updates on the missile attacks slash Poland? At your leisure, of course. I've been leisurely looking through the Twitter to see if I can find any more news about it, as well as my other sources. And it appears to be, um, at the moment, the consensus is the missiles may, and the word is may, have crossed through the border regions of Poland uh, to get to another part of Ukraine. And the Polish F-16s were uh, dispatched and scrambled to go up and make sure that those missiles did not accidentally veer off course and go further into Poland and end up hitting something. There doesn't appear to have been any uh, weapons usage by those F-16s to shooting anything down. And also there appears to be no detonations inside of Poland. So for right now, it appears to have been just an uh, airspace incursion. But even at that, that is still a big deal. But, you know, in the past, it's been sort of dealt with by ignoring it and sort of letting it have a pass. So it may be the same thing this time. We'll have to wait and see if there's an official response. And with that, I hope we were able to get that news update out to y'all fairly quickly and fairly concisely. Thank you, Matthew, for doing that. And with that, we are on to the next one. In our next Super Chat is going to go to Artbot who's a longtime channel hey! legend who puts in the 20 as well. And he says, Happy B-Day, LSA Army and Enforcers, and proud to be entrenched since July of 2022. He's old guard. He says, supporting our Ukrainian people, and let's go, LSA forever. And thank you so much for the support, Artbot, and thank you for being here for such a long while. You have been here forever. You really have. Uh, I remember you way back in July of 2022 and up till now, and you're a very common name that I've seen in the live chat. And I got to thank you so much for wishing a happy LSA day to everyone uh, and also wishing a happy LSA day to us. Uh, because really, it's as big a day to us as it is to y'all and to y'all as it is to us. It is such a big day because it was... It was at this time, 10 minutes ago, two years ago, um, that we actually created the Lee Spring Army. It was mentioned for the first time in the live chat. And then I said, hey, you know what? We'll just call you all the Lee Spring Army. And this has existed since then. This community has stayed more cohesive than any other one. And when I say that, I mean literally any other one. Even the bigger the bigger ones uh, that were much more popular, I guess, over a shorter amount of time at the beginning of the war here on the internet have even ended up fracturing and becoming a shadow or a shell of their former selves. They just don't really have the kind of presence they had before. But the Lee Spring Army is growing in its presence in the uh, Ukraine war community and is only growing stronger and larger with each passing day. It's something to be said about this community that no other stream, no other live stream that covers the Ukraine war gets close to having this kind of viewership on a daily basis. It's been nearly three weeks now that this stream has been getting above 7,000 live viewers at its peak, and tonight we got up to 11.2. No other live stream is able to do that. No other channel is able to do that uh, in the Ukraine war category, and we are able to do it just because the community is that strong and is that amazing and incredible that so many people would all gather around at the same time every single night to watch this news. It's not like that on any other channel. And just for that reason alone, we know that this community is the strongest and most vibrant one that there is in this category out there on YouTube. And so thank you so much once again for being entrenched in the LSA since July of 2022. And thank you so much for helping out on those Sunday night fundraisers to help out the Ukrainian people. And of course, LSA forever, the Lee Spring Army will never die, and long live the LSA. And with that, we are on to the next one. 
in our next one is going to go to Smog, another longtime channel legend who puts in a $20 hey! donation. Thank you very much, Smog, as always, for that support. And sadly, no comment to address. But Enforcer, what are you going to say? What say you? I got to thank you so much for the support, Smog, and helping this channel to keep on running. It is folks like you who help to make this thing possible. And if it wasn't for folks like you, we wouldn't be able to be here celebrating the uh, the second year of the LSA like we are tonight. Uh, that means a lot to me, and I got to thank you so much once again because you were one of those old guards whose name I've seen and heard for over two years at this point. And I hope I continue to hear of your name in this, in this Lee Spring Army and in this live chat for another two years if need be. But still, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that the best I can. And we are on to the next one. All right, and our next one is going to go to Bex Chitwood, who's also a legend. we got all the legends hey! of the LSA coming out tonight, and he puts in a $50 donation. And huge shout-out to you, Bex, for that support. He says, LSA, and do you thinking that there is anything that Russia could do that would motivate the United States to return to supporting with weapons and funds? That is a great question, Bex Chitwood. And off the top of my head, I would have to say, Probably not at the moment. I can't think of anything that the Russians could do because they're really doing everything beyond a tactical nuclear strike. I think if they were to start conducting mass mobilization, that may be the case, uh, that the, the U.S. support would kick up. But even then, I'm kind of doubting it at the moment. I'm kind of thinking that it might be in a little bit of a lull, uh, at least in my opinion. And I think that's something that has to be won here on the home front uh, in in good, strong arguments in support of Ukraine uh, instead of uh, somewhat weak or, uh, or, you know, kind of like lightweight arguments against support for Ukraine. It only takes a good, moderate argument, a good halfway strong argument to, to really win out on supporting Ukraine. But no one really makes it. Because here's what I usually see right now in the domestic political world as far as it goes to supporting Ukraine. I love Ukraine. I support Ukraine. And if you don't support Ukraine, you hate people and you eat babies. And it's like, okay, hold up. It's like, you can't say that to these people because they're never going to support Ukraine that way. You got to be like, hey, I like, I get what you're, I get what you're getting at. You want to, you know, keep America as a priority. You think you're doing that. But let me tell you why that's not the case and why it would be important for you to hop on board with us and support Ukraine. That's really the argument that should be made instead of immediately going on the attack. But so many people in America love to go on the attack because it's the best way to virtue signal. I mean, how much more virtuous can you be to attack the evildoers that don't agree with you? I mean, that is just perfect. Uh, so, you know, sadly, for now, I don't really think anything's going to be changing it because that's kind of the political scene here in America uh, as far as it goes with people who don't support Ukraine. And I got to say, I'm not saying that their position is just meh. I mean, you know, it's like, it's, it's it's not a great position. It's disadvantageous to Ukraine and disadvantageous to our national security interests abroad. And whether people want to um, act like we're a global power or not, the United States is a global power. Uh, we have to act like one at all times. There's not a time where we can pretty much just cover our eyes with our hands and act like we don't see what's going on around the world to our own sphere of influence. This is our sphere of influence. It, this, this sphere that we've created in Europe is ours. The Europeans are, of course, all part of it, but if it wasn't for the United States' direct involvement after World War II and throughout the entirety of the Cold War and after the Cold War, NATO would not exist. Nothing would exist in Europe like we see today. This is all our business. Uh, and that's why I think that it's important for Americans to realize that supporting Ukraine is supporting our own interests. Think about everything that's happened since World War II that the United States has done. The United States has become the single most powerful economy and military in the world. We also have one of the highest qualities of, of, of standards of living around the world for the most part throughout all the prior decades. Uh, and on top of that, we are able, a, an American citizen is able to travel to the wealthiest countries in the world, really all of them, without any nays naysayers out there saying that they cannot. That cannot be said for the Chinese. That cannot be said for the Russians. That couldn't be said for the Soviet Union. There is so much that the United States has gotten out of being a global power. And there is so much more that the United States and all of our allies in Europe and around the world can continue to get out of us being a global power. Because it's not like America is just this uh, imperial dominion over Europe. And Europe is nothing more than its lowly vassals. Europe has gotten so much out of this. I mean, it's a win-win for everyone involved in the West. The Europeans have gotten so much. They've gotten the largest military uh, in the world as their ally. And not only that, the largest economy in the world is their ally. And on top of that, we also end up spending a good amount of money in Europe. A lot of tourists in, from the United States that travel abroad mostly end up traveling to Europe. 
And that is a massive economic boom for the uh, for the Europeans. And not only that, our trade with Europe and the Europeans trade with us has ended up creating a massive amount of profit and economic activity that would have never been seen before. This is why this alliance is so important. We can't just act like we can just X them out now and just pretend like we never had this. This is what we have. It's the best thing in the world. Nothing can top it. Not being friends with the Chinese, being friends with the Russians, that might as well be throwing away gold for turds. This is something that is worth supporting and worth defending because if we continue to grow this sphere the better off we are and the better off everyone else is in the long run uh and so with that i hope that does address that the best i can bex chitwood uh and thank you once again for the support and helping this channel to keep on running and if y'all agree with me in the live chat on my statements there make sure to put an lsa in the chat but with that we are on to the next one all right and also enforcer we are Getting so close. We're 80 subs away from hitting that 179 mark Dang. today. We might actually do it tonight. The stream has brought in a ton of new subscribers tonight. And a huge shout out to everyone who has subscribed tonight that's new to the channel. Because we cover the news daily uh, in our short war videos and also these streams as well. And hitting the like button and subscribing is a huge way to help the channel out. To help us get a larger reach out there to get the news out faster. So a huge shout out to everyone for that. But with that, we are moving on to our next one. Which goes to, let's see here, goes to Panama Floyd, who puts in a $20 donation. And he says, the polls remember what orcs are really like and know they haven't changed. And I'm sure they don't want to escalate, but they damn sure won't be happy. And to take one from the chat, please. And I'd agree with you completely. I thank you so much for the support. I thank you for throwing that in because the Polish will never forget what the Russians really are. The Russians were brutal to the Poles throughout most of history. Uh, even up until uh, even hundreds of years ago, they were brutal to the Poles. Uh, it's something that the Polish will always remember, especially even in the modern day during the Katyn massacre after the invasion of Poland by the Germans and the Soviets. And not only that, the continued oppression of Polish people through the creation of the People's Republic of Poland, which would continue to try and put its boot down on the Polish people until finally the Polish people created solidarity, which ended up overcoming the Polish communist government and bringing forward the Polish Republic that we all know and love today that actually represents the will and the interests of the Polish people. Uh, I gotta say, they surely won't be happy and they surely will not uh, sit idly by. On top of that, they are the largest land army and well really the largest armed force in europe right now so they actually have the ability to stand up and do something if they want to uh but still thank you so much once again for support panama floyd i hope that does address that well and we will make sure to take one from the chat and so what do we got matthew all right and this is a very good question from jc the music man he says why doesn't the border countries such as poland simply shoot down the missiles that enter their airspace and it blows my mind that they don't uh, they usually do not because they do not have air defenses active in the area. They actually have to scramble F-16s to head out in the area. Uh, and then they don't want to shoot down the Russian missiles because if for some reason they aren't targeting Poland and they shoot them down, that could be considered direct armed intervention in the Ukraine war, which can cause a diplomatic quagmire that the Poles probably don't want to deal with. And uh, they've probably gotten word from other major countries like Britain, France, and the United States saying don't deal with it. And if something does happen in Poland, that actually ends up causing casualties or deaths on, uh, on the part of Russian military action then there will be a alliance-wide response. That's probably the assurances that they've been given in the background that leads them to probably not be as proactive in shooting down Russian missiles that may be violating Polish airspace. And so with that, I hope that does address that the best I can. And thank you so much once again for the support and help with this channel to keep running. And with that, we are on to the next one. All right. And the next one is going to go to uh, BJBJR. Uh, who puts in a $20 donation. And sadly, Junior, we cannot read off that Super Chat because it is political, but I want to thank you first off very much for your first ever support of the channel. And if you want, send me a replacement question or statement and we can circle back to it uh, and address it. But sadly, we can't address the politics. But Enforcer, what say you? And I got to thank you so much for the support. And I also have to uh, back up Matthew there. Sadly, we cannot talk about political topics on this channel, uh, sadly or positively. Uh, and 
that that's something that we try and hold as seriously as possible here on this channel. The reason why is that this channel does not take a partisan side in politics, neither do we ever wish to. Uh, we wish to remain a neutral um, stance on the political side of things and just remain a pro-Ukrainian voice. I think that's the most important thing, and we've seen so many YouTube channels that have gone down the political path and have pick, picked a partisan side, and it never ends well. They just end up dividing the Ukraine war community and then attacking the half that doesn't agree with them, which doesn't help to gain Ukrainian supporters. It only uh, helps to benefit the loss of Ukraine supporters and the winning of the Russians in the end on the more so public opinion front. Uh, so we don't want to touch politics. I do thank you for the support, though. And if you do want to throw in a replacement comment, please feel more than free to do so. But thank you once again for support and helping to keep this channel possible. And with that, we are on to the next one. And our next one is going to go to Blue Flam Triple Seven LSA once again, and this time he throws in another massive fifty dollar hey! donation. Huge shout out to Blue Flam for that support. He says it's a skit actually. He says, "Dad, I want to be in politics when I grow up." He says, "Are you insane? Have you completely lost your mind? Does your uh, shoit bounce off the mirror?" And the son says, "Forget it." And there seems to be too many requirements. No politics. Chat. Happy LSA Day. Question to the chat. <laughs> I don't even know what the punchline was. I was like, what's the punchline? I was like, is the crap bouncing? Like, uh, like the, the crap do be uh, bouncing. Like, it really do be. Uh, but on top of that, thank you so much once again for the incredible support, Blue Flam 777, and helping the channel to keep on running. Happy LSA Day to you as well once again. And happy LSA Day to everyone in the chat. And thank you so much once again for the support and helping this channel to keep on running. And we will make sure to get a question in the chat. And so with that, what do we got, Matthew? And the question from the chat is going to go to Ed, and that's Irish Ed. He says, will uh, draft age men start leaving Russia like last time they had a big mobilization? Probably so. I would actually say that's probably going to be a, another mass exodus again. But there's not really as many places for them to go. Because originally they tried to flee to the Baltics, Finland, and Georgia. Now the Finland and the Baltics are closed off to them. Now the only place that they can go is Georgia. Uh, and I believe that they may even get closed off here in the future. So... I hope that does address that the best I can, because there is a mass exodus. There's only one way for them to exodus, which is to Georgia. Uh, but with that, thank you so much once again for the support. And uh, Blue Flam 777, thank you for sponsoring that live chat. And with that, we are about to be moving on to the next one. But thank you so much once again for helping this channel to keep on running. And with that, what do we got, Matthew? All right. And we're grabbing a live chat. Is that right? Uh, we already grabbed one. And so with that, we're on to the next one. All right, so the next one goes to Wubba, who puts in a $20 donation. And thank you very much, Wubba, for that support. Hey! He's just playing guitar and earning my LSA sleeve hashes. Hey! Thank you so much for the support, Wubba! And thank you so much once again for being one of those incredible old guards of the channel who have been here through thick and thin. It means a lot to us, and I gotta say that I greatly appreciate you being here with us tonight again, Wubba, and playing the guitar. A lot of people play the guitar. Sadly, I can't. Uh, but I hope you're a really good player of the guitar, and I hope that you're working on making an LSA anthem. I would love to eventually see that the LSA also has an anthem as well, because that would be just incredibly cool. Uh, of course, if, if y'all would like to make an anthem, I just want y'all to know, we want the anthem to be something classy. Uh, nothing like, and I'm not saying that, you know, these kinds of music, uh, this kind of music is bad. I'm just saying that's not really anthem material, but like hard rock or heavy metal is not anthem material. It's gotta be like an orchestral kind of a thing, um, that is, uh, proud and powerful sounding really is the best way I can explain it. But beyond that, I do thank you so much once again for support Wubbit and helping this channel to keep on running. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to historic Tasmanian who puts in a 15. It says, thanks to all for kind thoughts. It's been tough, but I wouldn't miss a stream uh, anniversary and question to the, uh, the live chat and have a pizza. I'm honored to be a member, and we of the LSA, I wish you best. And thank you so much for the support, and thank you for being here with us tonight as we Peace. are... Excuse me. Oh, excuse you. Bless you. Whoa, man. Whoa, Jack. Whoa. Uh, but whoa. Still, thank you so much once again for being here with us tonight. Uh, it, it's uh, It's been... Quite a bit. It's been quite a bit. Uh, in Historic Tasmania, you have been going through uh, a little bit of uh, tough times yourself, and I hope that you're improving and getting better. Um, but it's still great to have you here uh, on this anniversary of the Lee Spring Army. Great to know that you're hopefully in improving health and will continue to be, and we will make sure 
to send that question to the live chat. Thank you so much for supporting the Pizza Fund, and thank you so much for being an honored member of the Lee Spring Army's Old Guard. And so with that, what do we got for a live chat, Matthew? And the live chat question is going to go to Random Name, who says, What do you have to say about Russia saying they capture 11 out of the four suspects? I have to say, once again, Russian crime-stopping um, abilities are absolutely unfounded. They are able to arrest more people than were actually involved in the crime, showing once again that their crime suppression ability is 300%. And so with that, I hope that does address that well. Thank you so much once again for sponsoring that live chat and helping this channel to keep on running Historic Tasmanian. And with that, we are on to the next one. And our next one goes to you, Marvelous Matt. Who puts in a 20? And I'm telling you what, my Matt is marvelous. Hey! I gotta tell you what. This is his first ever super chat on a live stream. Uh, it says on a live stream. So maybe that's the first ever super chat he's ever put in anywhere. So huge thanks to you, Marvelous Matt, for that. It's, uh, and he says, How difficult would it be for LSA to launch an artillery factory? Ooh, that'd be pretty tough. It would take a, uh, a capital investment of tens of millions of dollars, most likely. Uh, it would also require us to be able to get approval from the U.S. government and then line up buyers for artillery shells or the artillery pieces. So in reality, that would be pretty tough. I think that would be well out of the scope of this channel. Because while we can do LSA flags, Artillery pieces, probably a whole other thing. Best to leave that to base systems and other kinds of companies that do produce artillery. But with that, thank you so much for the support, uh, Marvelous Matt. And, and Matt, you are marvelous indeed. And thank you so much hey! for hey! But still, thank you so much for your first Super Chat ever to this channel and helping it to keep on running. Folks like you help to make this thing possible. And I thank you for being here with us tonight and supporting this channel so that way we can help it to keep on running. And thank you for being here and throwing your first Super Chat on LSA Day of all days. Uh, and so with that, we are on to the next one. But thank you once again. And would you look at it? We just hit 4,000 likes. That's uh, one of the highest numbers of likes I've seen on one of our streams during the middle of it in a long, long time. So thank you, everyone, for hitting that like. And we also just hit 80,000 views as well, which is crazy. Um, but we're moving Christ. on to our next Super Chat question. It's crazy. Um, this one goes to Jason Carpenter, who puts in a 15. and says, hi, guys, and happy LSA Day. And we've come such a long way, and LSA is killing it, bro. And question from the chat, please. And thank you so much for the support, Jason Carpenter. I have to agree that the Lee Spring Army is killing it, Jerry. Killing it. And I got to thank you so much once again, Jason Carpenter, for being here with us so much farther down the road. It's been two years now that the Lee Spring Army has existed. Two holy years. And you're still here, Jason Carpenter. You were here before the Lee Spring Army even existed. And you're still here. That's crazy. And I got to thank you so much once again for enjoying the Lee Spring Army. The Lee Spring Army is absolutely killing it. And now, at this point in the stream, we are only 50 subscribers away from 179,000. If some, if, a, if about 50 of you, which shouldn't be that many of you, uh, hit the subscribe button uh, here over the next, you know, five minutes or so, y'all might end up being the 179,000th subscriber. We're hitting a new thousand every single day at this point on this channel, which is absolutely wicked because we're getting really close to uh, around 200,000. I mean, we're only 20,000 subscribers away at this point. I know that sounds like a lot, but considering that we've gotten around 17,000 subscribers in the past 28 days, uh, I believe that that's not too far away. That's just about a whole other month away at this going speed. And honestly, it's it's probably less than that. It's probably like three weeks to two and a half weeks, two weeks away. Work. Uh, yeah, at this going speed. So we probably might be able to hit 200,000 as a channel foist, uh, which would be absolutely wild. I just wanted to share that with y'all because I thought that'd be really cool, you know, if we were able to do that all together. Um, but still, thank you so much once again, Jason Carpenter, for being here with us tonight. Happy LSA, LSA Day to you. And let's make sure to get a question from the live chat. What do we got, Matthew? All right. And the question from the live chat this time is going to go to uh, Jay Casey, who says, do you think they started the fire on the roof to make it collapse to cover up the evidence? And also a helo dropped lots of water, and that seems like it could have helped. Uh, the helo dropping lots of water is probably what did cave the roof in. Um, but on top of that, the fire was actually started, from what I understand, inside of the lower part of the concert hall. So it was probably the water that caved the roof in, um, less so than the actual fire damage. Uh, but with that, I hope that does address that the best I can, at least, with the knowledge, the limited knowledge I have of how fire spread and how firefighting with a helicopter works, filled with water. Um, but still, thank you so much once again for sponsoring that live chat, Jason Competent, and helping this channel to keep on running. And with that, 
We're about to be moving on to the next one. Before we do, uh, I got to be honest with y'all. I I hate to say this because it is LSA Day, and of all days, this is probably one of the best ones to be live on air on right now. I got to tell y'all, I'm feeling a little lightheaded. Uh, Matthew can tell you that I've been oh. dealing with a little bit of something throughout the day, and I've been talking about it. Uh, I don't know what it is. I just haven't been feeling that great. Um, so uh, I think I'm going to have to unfortunately start speeding up uh, my answers to uh, Super Chats and Live Chats so that we can maybe try and round the stream out because I'm not feeling that hot right now. But with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and also real quick to return to one super chat we had from BJBJR who put in that twenty. Um, he, he put in a subsequent statement. He said, "I apologize for the political statement. First time here, and you guys are the real deal. And what effect does the untimely demise of so many Russian brass have on the troops, other brass, and Dumas crowd?" And thank you so much for the support. And it's perfectly fine if it's your first time here. Hey, that's a okay. Uh, it's just that we never cover politics, and I hope uh, I hope I was able to explain why we do that. Uh, and I hope that you uh, I hope that you really like that because it's something that no other channel does. Uh, but beyond that, I gotta say uh, thank you so much for appreciating what we do. And if a lot of Russian top brass was lost at the communication headquarters in Sebastopol, it will probably temporarily affect the cohesiveness or at least the planning of the Russian Black Sea Fleet until proper re replacements are found and they're able to get well seated in their positions. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that the best I can. Thank you so much once again for support, JR, and helping this channel to keep on rolling. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Marion Deemer as well, who puts in a $20 donation. And thank you very much, Marion, for that. And she says, LSA Day, and it's so good to be back and could only listen in the past six weeks. And you guys rock. Slava Ukraine. And a welcome back, Marianne Deemer. It's great to have you back. Uh, absolute legend of the LSA. Your name was here during those very early months of the war and has been here ever since then. It's wonderful to have you back. I hope you've been enjoying it back. And, uh, and it's perfectly fine that you could only listen to the past six weeks. That's only the past month and a half. And so with that... Thank you so much once again. You rock, Marion Deemer, for being here with us for so long. And of course, Slavo Graini, and happy LSA Day to you. And with that, we are on to the next one. All right. And the next one goes to Jordi Fer van Larhoven. And he put in a 55 euro. And I hope I did not butcher hey. your name. I hope I did it justice. And thank you very much for that very generous support. He says, happy LSA Day from the Netherlands. And it's trying to be in whenever I can because of the time difference. And I completely respect that, uh, Jordy. And I got to thank you so much once again for the support being here with us tonight. That's crazy because the time right now in Europe, at least in your time zone, is probably something like uh, six or five in the morning right now. So it is very, very early for you, I believe, if I'm getting that time correct. Beyond that, however, I got to say thank you so much for being one of our Dutch viewers here in the Lee Spring Army. I love to know that we have viewers from all around the world, the Netherlands uh, being one of them, because every time we've ever dropped down onto a street view in the Netherlands, the Netherlands is truly one of the most beautiful places I've seen for it to be really nothing but lowlands. I mean, look at that. That is very picturesque, even just in this random spot in the Netherlands. That really is. And you see those uh, people like riding bicycles just out here. Like they took a stop. There's a park bench, like literally right over there, just on the side of the road. You won't see that in America. <laughs> like you're just park bench on the side of the road. Yeah. And also these little canals. Oh, goodness, man. The stories of these canals from World War II, it was hell. Uh, but beyond that, uh, beyond beyond the recounting of war coming to the Netherlands, uh, I believe uh, twice, both in World War One and in World War II, this is a really beautiful country. I think the Netherlands is one of the prettiest out there really like the place one day i'd like to go there and see it myself go to places like rotterdam the hague uh you know the hague has its own reputation uh and also what the hell is this what is this is this like the giant like flower greenhouse let me check this i want to see these are those giant ass greenhouses that they use for those flower companies i believe right here that is nuts they cover like an entire area nuts. south of the hague you know, I've heard some guy, I um, can't remember his name right off the bat. It might come back to me here in just a second. But some other guy wanted to go to the Hague. I can't remember who it was. Um, Hitler? Geez, who was Putin. That's who wants to go to oh, the Hague. He, he yeah. wanted to take a trip there, express trip, uh, first class uh, on the uh, military plane to the Hague. Um, and hopefully someone could set that up for him uh, one of these days. Because, uh, that would be a very kind uh, thing to do for Putin. Man, you know, if, if they get Putin to the Hague, they're going to catch him lacking. <laughs> oh, oh man 
I might feel like crap, but I can still come up with them jokes, baby. <laughs> but, beyond <All> right. <laughs> that, but beyond that, thank you so much once again for the support, Jordy, and helping this channel to keep on running. And I thank you so much for being here with us tonight on LSA Day. And with that, we are on to the next one. And also to the Jonathan in the live chat, just a simple Jonathan, just the one word, Jonathan. Um, they're talking about somebody else that's a troll. So don't worry. They're not talking about you. It's someone else, and I haven't spotted them just yet, but I'm about to get them. Um, but anyways, moving on to our next super chat, we have one from Just Chillin. who puts in a very generous $100 Dang. donation, and Just Chillin is a channel legend. And thank you very much for that support. He says, just a quick thank you for what you guys do, and happy anniversary, LSA, and grab a question from the chat, please. And thank you so much for the massive support, Just Chillin. And thank you so much for uh, enjoying what we do. I know you've had to enjoy what we do because you've been here for ever since like day four, I believe. You've been here forever in my mind. I can't remember a time in the channel's history where you were not here. Uh, and so thank you so much once again for the support. And thank you so much for just throwing some kind words our way. And of course, happy LS Day Day to you too. And we will make sure to grab a question from the live chat. But I got to say once again, thank you for being an old guard of the Lee Spring Army and sticking with this channel through thick and thin. Sticking with this channel as we are about to pass 179,000 subscribers. We're less than 30 away right now. Nearly 20 of y'all have subscribed in between the last time we brought that up and now. Uh, so we may actually pass 179,000 while this stream is live. Uh, so, you know, if one of y'all do, let us know in the live chat. If you hit subscribe, be like, I'm the 179,000th subscriber, and I'll be very happy to see that. But still, thank you so much once again, Just Chillin'. And what do we got for a live chat, Matthew? And the live chat question is going to go to Geek Hippie, who says, when is Ukraine getting the ammo that they desperately need? I think they're supposed to be getting that within the next few weeks because the Czechs have gotten the money, they've purchased the ammunition, and I think currently they're in the process of shipping the ammunition to Ukraine. So it should be within the next few weeks that they get that vital ammunition that they so desperately need. And so with that, I hope that does address that live chat well. Thank you, Just Chillin', once again for support and helping this channel be possible. And with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and our next one is going to go to uh, Jack Ray, who puts in a 1337 and says, hey. LSA. And thank you so much for the support, Jack Ray, and helping this channel to keep on running uh, because so many folks uh, like you, Jack Ray, helped to make this channel possible. And so with that, long live Lee Spring Army. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Tom Xman, who puts in a 10 and says, yes, Marmot. We need to relax. And we didn't have the Marmot last night. Oh, we, we did have the Marmot last night, but we will whip it out again. So let's go get the Marmot. Oh, oh whoa. Whoa. Romania. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> it's unintentional. Oh, my God. Yuck. Yuck. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, my God. Me lashing out at people. Hashtag quirky. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, hey. <laughs> hey. 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 Oh, hey there. It's the Marmot. It's Marmot time, baby. And of course, would we, I interest you in a plum, good sir? Could you? Would you like one of these grapes or one of these plums? We have them all for sale here. And also, if you know the special word, you can get rock. Rock. <laughs> that's it. That's zoom in on the rock. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but beyond that, I gotta thank you so much once again for support and wanting to see uh, a little marmot, a little precious, cute baby marmot. And of course, oh man. I'm attacking everyone. Cancel everyone. Ew! <laughs> Gross! Get alive! Shut your uh, mouth, you <laughs> cancel culture, right? Get, uh, rock! <laughs> but beyond that, thank you so much once again for support and asking for the marmot because everyone loves the marmot. Everyone absolutely loves it. Everyone needs a marmot. And of course, we can't forget. We can't forget. I got to add this in because this is a huge contrib contribution by Confrelli himself. The marmot's name is actually Alan! Alan, it's it's that's the marmot's name. I had to throw that in just to make sure that we uh, got that out. But with that, I hope that does address that quite well, quite well indeed. And with that, we're moving on to our next one, which is a thirty-three dollar super chat from Hal Rose, and he said, "Enforcer Matt, uh, voice crack right there. What's the story yeah. about so many pants ears turning into scrap metal on week one? Pick a question from the chat." And that is a great question, Hal Rose. That is an amazing question. There were so many pants ears turning into scrap metal. 
just because they they apparently weren't able to pick up any of the drones that were attacking them or they were too close to the front lines and got targeted by Ukrainian artillery. And that ended up creating a delicious piece of scrap out of every single Pantsir in the first week of the war and really through the first month. The Pantsir S1 um, uh, air defense system is the reason why we actually have the Lee Spring Army because it was the Lee Springs on the rear suspension of the Pantsir that I falsely stated were archaic, although Lee Springs are still a fairly common kind of suspension. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. And thank you so much once again for your support and help with this channel to keep rolling. And we will make sure to pick a live chat question. So what do we got, Matthew? And the live chat question goes to Mark Gagne, who says, Are the Russians using boomerang missiles over Poland? Um... I do not think so. <laughs> Just so with that, um, I hope that does address that fairly well. I don't think there's such a thing as a boomerang missile. They may be adjusting their flight path and flying over the Polish border for a short while, uh, but I don't think that that is uh, a specific missile that is a boomerang. But with that, I hope that does address that well, and we are on to the next one. And our next ones go to Badger Bro and Matt Cheer, who each put in a $10 donation and without comments. But thank you very much, Matt and Badger Bro, for that support very much and helping to keep us running. And also, real quick, to the one word Jonathan that I called one word Jonathan, I called him also simple Jonathan in the live chat. I meant that in the reference way. I didn't mean that in a bad way. Uh, I see he's taking it as a joke, so I'm glad you did. He's like, that could be taken wrong, but didn't mean it like that. So just make that perfectly clear. Um, but moving on to our next super chat here, this one goes to Made in Canada 182, who also puts in a 10 and says, Congrats on 178,000 subs hey! and at 200,000 coming soon. And I always wonder every day if the artillery crew in the intro slash outro are still sending Ukraine freedom and love messages to Russia. And happy birthday, LSA. And thank you so much for the support made in Canada 182. And from what I understand, we do not have any updates on that particular artillery crew that fired off the LSA shell. Uh, we haven't had those for at least eight months now, so I don't really know what they're up to, but hopefully it's uh, good things. Uh, beyond that, however, I got to thank you, Made in Canada 182, for being a longtime channel legend and helping this channel to keep on rolling. It is folks like you who helped to make it possible, and if it wasn't for someone like you, we wouldn't be able to be here right now. And so thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And also, uh, let's see. Let me make sure I covered everything. Um, and also, happy LSA Day to you. And thank you for your 10th Super Chat to the channel in its entire history. And with that, we are on to the next one. And our next Super Chat goes to Stupid Asshole. Who hey! puts in a $10 donation and says, thanks, guys. And I hope that the, uh, that the psycho doesn't force a nuclear disaster. And thank you so much for the support. And I hope that he doesn't force a nuclear disaster as well. That would be a pretty tough deal uh, for everyone to work with, everyone involved, even um, the countries that wouldn't be attacked. And hopefully that will not happen. And so with that, thank you for the support. I hope that does address that well. And we are on to the next one. And also, um, just for the folks asking, uh, Ukraine did hit a uh, an oil depot in Crimea as well. But we're going to save that news for tomorrow, considering that we're running low on time and the enforcer is feeling unwell. But that will be covered tomorrow on the Short War video. Um, but moving on to our next one here, we have a 20 from Nustis Ryan, who says, Congratulations, Enforcer and Enforcer Matt. Second year, stay well and take a chat. And thank you so much for the support, Justice Ryan. You were one of those old guards as well. I got to thank you for being here for over two years. And thank you so much once again. Uh, hopefully, I will be able to stay well and we will make sure to take that live chat. And so, what do we got, Matthew? In the live chat goes to Brianna Joy, who says, How long do you think Ukraine has until the orcs move the Black Sea fleet further south of Sochi? Um, I think it's probably going to be about another uh, half a year because it doesn't look like the port facilities down the area of Opchinchiri are anywhere close to being ready. They are incredibly small, probably woefully under-equipped for the task at hand of pretty much running the Black Sea fleet. So I have a feeling it'll probably be another six months to a year, most likely. And so with that, I hope that does answer that live chat well. Thank you so much once again for support, Justice Ryan, and helping this channel to be possible. And with that, we are on to the next one. And up next, big shout out to Quantum Fighter, who puts in a 10, along with Mark Andre Brunet, also put in a 10 as well. And they did not leave comments. But thank you very much, Quantum Fighter and Mark, for that support very much. And of course, it helps keep the channel running. And moving on to our next one here, we have one from Maxim Malai, uh, who puts in a 10. It says, Happy LSA Day in Week and Schlub Ukraine. And I just uh, joined, so ignore if this question has already been answered, but in, uh, oh, goodness. Maxim, that is somewhat political, and sadly, we cannot address it. 
Um, but thank you very much for the support. And Enforcer, what say you? And again, thank you so much for the support, Maxim. Of course, we want to avoid things that are political as much as possible. Uh, and so I hope that does address why we can't address that well. But thank you so much once again for support and helping this channel to keep on running. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Anita, who go uh, who doesn't go, but they put in a 10. Uh, and Anita said, I've been here since the start, still here, and will never leave in LSA. And thank you so much for being here with us still, Anita. That is incredible to know that you've been with us through thick and thin and continue to be here and will continue to stay here. Uh, it's incredible because, you know, just on a channel lore level, there's been so much that has gone on that could have ended up being the end of the Lee Spring Army and could have ended up being the end of the channel, but somehow we were able to persevere. We were able to persevere through two great schisms on our Discord servers. Uh, we were able to persevere through the YouTube war that happened in October of last year, uh, and it looks like there was a smaller one that happened just about a week uh, ago, and we were for some reason dragged into it, although we were doing nothing. Uh, and we ended up getting through that fine and getting another thousand subscribers that day. So those people can kiss it. Uh, <laughs> but beyond that, we continue to just power on through and persevere day in and day out, week after week, month after month, year after year. No one can stop us. No one will ever stop us. And we'll keep on doing what we are, we're doing. And I thank you so much, Anita, for being one of those people that makes the least spring army an immortal and mighty force on the internet. And so with that, thank you so much once again. And long live the LSA. And with that, we are on to the next one. And up next, we have a nub one from Smog, who puts in a 10. It says, I've been here since day one, and you went from a gaming channel to a news channel covering the war. And I remember when I first heard the about the invasion and went searching for a channel and found you and thanks. Thank you so much, Smog. And that is uh, absolutely incredible. I love that you have the honey badger in your profile picture as well. Really cool. Uh, but uh, it is really cool to think that people were here when I was a, ch uh, when I was a gaming channel, and now uh, people are here much later uh and in, in watching the stream it, it's absolutely unbelievable that's been over two years since that point and it's been two years now since the lsa has been founded and everything is still going strong i gotta thank you so much once again for being here for that long and helping this channel to keep on running and helping it to be possible smog because if it wasn't for folks like you we wouldn't be able to keep this thing rolling and so thank you so much once again i hope that does address that well and with that we are on to the next one and the next one goes to DST is artificial, who puts in a 10 and says, Hey guys, and would it be possible for you to compile a list of the best X accounts that you follow, which is formerly Twitter. And I just got my account back after being suspended for anti Putin rhetoric. And I want to follow good accounts. And at DST, if you want a good starter list, uh, go to our page at it's the enforcer on Twitter and go click on our uh, following tab. And I'm following about 92 accounts over there on Twitter, which are pretty credible and good accounts. I always cross reference with our own sources though. I will say that because obviously uh, we don't just take everyone's word for everything. We have to double check it because we are putting it out on our channel. Um, but, but those are a good start. Uh, but enforcer, what say you? I would have to agree with Matthew on that. And also Matthew's the one who largely runs our Twitter. Uh, so I think that his statements are uh, of course on par because he's the one who's following those people. And so with that, Thank you so much once again for support. DST is artificial for your first super chat to this channel and helping you to keep on running. I wish I could sound a little bit more energetic, but to be quite honest with y'all, I have run out of steam uh, and I'm just trying to make sure that we get on through this and thank each and every one of y'all for supporting. Thank y'all for being here on LSA day and also uh, get to some live chats as well. And so with that, thank you so much once again for your first super support ever. And thank you for being a part of the Lee Spring Army. Long live the LSA and we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Big Snack 100. Uh, who puts in a five and says, Marmot, we want Marmot. He said, Putin fears the Marmots. Marmots assemble. Marmot gang. Marmot squad. Marmot. And thank you so much for the support, Big Squad 100. I think we did a Marmot just about five to seven minutes ago. And I would do another one if it wasn't for me feel, uh, feeling like this bad. Like, I don't know what it is, but I feel like there's like absolutely no like, like, pressure inside of my body right now so i uh, thank you so much for the support and helping this channel to keep on running uh and i hope that the marmot earlier was was good so with that thank you so much once again i hope that does address that well and with that we are on to the next one 
And Heather Fitzgibb in LSA puts in a five and says, Marmot time, please, sir. A juicy plum? <laughs> Goodness, man, another Marmot request. <laughs> well, I, I, I hate to say this, but we did do a Marmot just a little bit earlier, uh, and I hope that that Marmot was the one that can suffice. Uh, but still, thank you so much once again for the support. Uh, Heather Fitzgibbon, you've been here forever, and thank you once again for being an old guard and helping this channel to keep on running, and thank you for having LSA in your name. And so with that, we are on to the next one, and thank you so much once again. And the next one goes to ASV, who puts in a $20 donation. And no comment on this one, but ASV, you have supported the channel before. I do remember that. And hey. thank you very much for supporting us once again and helping to keep us running. And we do greatly appreciate it very much. And I think the Enforcer has something to say as well. And I got to thank you so much for the support, ASV. You didn't throw in a comment, but the support does mean a lot in helping this thing to keep on running. And I got to thank you so much for that. And so with that, I hope that does address that well. And we are on to the next one. And this one goes to Carrie Ann Corzo, who puts in a five and says, Nick and I send our gratitude for all you guys do. And who was the first person to say at least spring army? I thank you so much for the support, Carrie Ann. I thank you both, uh, you and Nick, still thinking for y'all's enjoyment and support of the channel. And to answer that question, sadly, I do not know it off the top of my head, but we actually had it documented off air, uh, I think, in the Discord DMs. I would go through them, but I don't want to show things that might be sensitive uh, for some folks that they've been sending. Um, Bubble that. Thank you so much for the support, Carrie Ann. And I think that some of our LSA uh, historiographers like uh, Mestiza might actually have the answer to that question or Conferelli for that matter, because I think Conferelli was the one who did send that to me. But still, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Tom Charles, who puts in a five and says, Happy LSA Day, everyone, and please take one from the chat. And thank you so much for being here on LSA Day. Happy LSA Day to you. And we will make sure to take one from the live chat, Tom Charles. And so with that, what do we got? All right. And this one goes to Avari Mandibratis, who says, uh, Have you seen the first POV video allegedly from the attackers in Moscow themselves? I have not seen that video. Uh, I will be looking around for it, though. I've seen almost all of the third-person videos, but not the first-person POV video from the gunman. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that live chat the best I can. Thank you so much once again for support and sponsoring that, uh, I believe, Tom Charles. And with that, uh, we are on to the next one. You know, next, a big shout-out to Tuxedo Panther, Catherine F., Keymaster, and Jenna, last name Tolls, uh, who each put in a $5 donation without a comment. But of course, thank y'all all very much, all four of y'all, for that support and helping to keep us running. And up next, we have a super chat from Covert Design, who puts in a five and says, I just started watching you guys. And also, welcome, Covert hey. Design, to the LSA. He says, it, feel, <laughs> it feels like well done war reporting by the cast of Mystery Science Theater 3000. And I actually don't know what that is. I've never heard of that before, but I think that's a good compliment. So thank you very much. I think that's a pretty high compliment. I got to thank you so much for the support cover design. Uh, and thank you so much for just starting to watch. Uh, and, and we try our best. I thank you so much for appreciating it. And if you subscribe, uh, you will be able to hear about us covering this news, which is six days a week uh, here in live stream form every single day, but Monday. And we also put out short war uh, video summaries, which are about 15 to 20 minutes long. Uh, pretty much every single day of the week, seven days a week when possible. Um, but still, thank you so much once again. Welcome to the Lee Spring Army, and I hope you're here to stay. And so with that, we are on to the next one. And also a quick correction real quick. Catherine F. put in a 10, but I wrote it down as 5 for some reason. I don't know why. But Catherine, sorry about that. And also, thank you very much for the $10 Super Chat, and we greatly appreciate that very much. And our next one here goes to GTI78007. And who puts in a five. And a GTI, that's a very nice Volkswagen. Very nice car. Uh, they said, a nice work Ukraine. And puts in the Ukraine uh, flag. And they said, Kitos. And thank you so much for the support and helping this channel keep on running. Thank you for being one of our rare Japanese viewers. Uh, it's really cool to know that you're from the uh, from the state of Japan. Uh, thank you so much once again for being here with us at this time of day. All the way over in Japan on the other side of the world. And thank you once again for just being uh, the, uh, a supporter of the channel and supporting the channel for the first time ever. I hope I was able to address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Paige Malone, who puts in the five and says, he can't stand that they are still fighting in Ukraine. And I think he's being defeated and with his ego. And I would agree with that completely, Paige Malone. And I got to thank you so much for the support and helping this channel to keep on running. I hate to make it short, but honestly, I am uh, I'm about out right now. And so with that, thank you so much once again. And we are on to the next one. 
In our next one goes to Barry Woodward, who puts in a five and says, please thank the 10,000 plus viewers for joining the LSA tonight and invite them to join us tomorrow for a fantastic fundraiser and Slava LSA. And y'all be sure to join us tomorrow, by the way, because every single Sunday, if you're new here, we run a fundraiser for a Ukrainian charity to help out Ukraine every single Sunday. And typically, we average somewhere in the neighborhood of about $5,000 raised for a charity every single Sunday. And the total is up to at least $1.3 million in total raised since the beginning of the channel till now. So a lot of good fundraising on that. And Enforcer, what say you? And I would agree. I got to thank you so much, Barry Woodward, for the support. And I also have to thank the around the 11.2 thousand people who were here at the peak of the stream uh, watching this thing. And I got to think about the 86,000 people who have watched so far. Absolutely incredible stuff. We thank every single one of y'all and we appreciate y'all greatly. And if y'all do want to join us tomorrow, join us tomorrow because tomorrow will be a Sunday fundraiser night. Uh, night. We'll be running a fundraiser uh, for a nonprofit that is helping out in Ukraine, which does massive amounts of help on the humanitarian side of taking care of Ukrainian civilians. And so with that, Thank you so much once again. Slava Ukraini and long live the Lee Spring Army. And with that, we are on to the next one. And our next one goes to Philip Fix's LSA, who puts in a five and says, I remember when the LSA was formed, people were poking Enforcer so hard, and he just took it. And it's so glad to have been a part of the journey in Slava LSA. And I thank you so much for the support, Philip Fix's LSA. And what's so funny is that the creation of the Lee Spring Army is kind of what led to the first uh, schism on the Discord, the first great schism, uh, is because the moderators at the time were starting to get a little bit power hungry and acting like they could dictate to me how we run the show, uh, which, you know, people people like you, Philip Fixes, who have been around the block with us for at least two years, knows that that's one thing I'd never allow anymore, even in the slightest, just people trying to tell us how to run this show. Uh, because once that begins and you give an inch, people take a mile on that sort of thing. Um, but they absolutely hated that Matthew and me were starting to lean into the whole LSA side of things. Uh, and I told those people to stuff it. I said, we're doing it. We want to do it. And that's what we're going with. Uh, now those people are nowhere. I don't even know where the hell they are anymore, but they're <laughs> they failing. They fell off the face of the earth, man. Like yeah. they, they, they tried to start a new YouTube channel after they turned on us. Uh, that lasted, I think a week. Uh, and then they disappeared off the face of the earth and I've never seen or any of them ever again. Yeah, I never saw them again, ever. Uh, so all those people fell off the face of the earth, thank God, because they were way too full of themselves. Uh, and and so we're still here doing our thing, and the LSA is stronger than ever before. And I got to say that that was an amazing thing for us to have leaned into because it really gave this community uh, a sense of belonging to a specific thing. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well. Thank you so much once again for support and helping us to keep this thing running. And with that, we are on to the next one. And also, we are just three subscribers away from 179,000. We are so close. We're going to hit that in probably the next five minutes or so. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do it. You could be our 179,000th subscriber. Uh, but with that, we're moving on to our next Super Chat, which goes to James Dunn, who puts in a five and says, Here to Tello Years, and I be here F uh, or the next two if needed. And I thank you so much for the support, and I thank you for having been here with us for so long, and I hope that you really are here with us for the next two years, if that's the unfortunate reality of this war. Uh, but thank you so much once again, James Dunn, for being one of those old guards and being here with us still, and helping this channel to keep on running. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to Agent B7, who puts in a five, and says, Just as I predicted, Wagner showed everyone that if they plan to do something in Russia, no one will stop them. And here we go. And I agree with you completely on that, Agent B7. Wagner did show everyone if you plan to do something in Russia, no one's really going to stop you until you're done. Uh, and so with that, thank you so much once again for support, and here we go. But thank you once again, and we are on to the next one. And we just hit 179,000 hey! subscribers. Hey, 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 oh, hey. Let's go. Jaga, jaga, LSA. Another I'm thousand. About, thank you all, all for subscribing. That's a big one. Another thousand on another day. For many channels, this will be a great day. For us, it's just another Tuesday. I'm just kidding. It's a great day. And I got to thank everyone for subscribing today. In total, we've actually ended up gaining. Uh, and let me, let me check the exact number here. We've ended up gaining... Oh, no, Matthew. People are unsubscribing just for the hell of it to, as the joke. So it went back down to 178. Um, but anyway... Oh, come on, man. I knew they were going to do that. I shouldn't have called it out. Yeah, you shouldn't have called <laughs> shouldn't it have out. Anything, man. But here they all come back. I respect <laughs> the troll, though. I respect it. <laughs> oh, my Lord, man. They're actually all coming back right now, all in a split second. Oh, my Lord. We're, we're still like five And short. someone's... 
Mm-hmm. And also, someone's telling me in the live chat that I've my my news about the Poland airspace has made it onto Reddit. I hope it's a positive spin on it. I hope they're not bashing us or anything like that. But um, I'll have to check that out after the stream. Apparently, we've made it on Reddit famous. Oh, well, Reddit fame. Hey, <laughs> but beyond that, we have gotten 900 subscribers today exactly at the moment. Uh, and I got to say, that was so hilarious because, Matthew, right when you called it out, literally like 50 people unsubscribed and then resubscribed within like 20 seconds. It was hilarious. Uh, uh, but, <laughs> I, mean, I like it. I respect that. I respect it. But beyond that, thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Absolutely incredible that you all did. We passed another thousand today. We're now just a thousand away from 180,000 subscribers, which is crazy because not that long ago we were below, uh, we were at 156,679. Uh, and we've gone from that low point because the channel's peak before that was 160,166. We went from that to now we're looking at 180,000 here in the near future, and we may even be getting really close to 200,000 if we keep up this speed each and every day. Uh, and so with that, Thank you so much once again, everyone, for subscribing. Thank you for becoming a part of this channel. And I hope that y'all are all here to stay. We are always appreciative of each and every one of y'all. And while I don't really sound that excited or that hot tonight, uh, I got to tell y'all that I am always greatly appreciative of everything that y'all have uh, done in support of this channel and how much y'all appreciate and adore our coverage. We adore every single one of y'all and y'all's appreciation. And so with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and the next one goes to Neil Vizanon, who puts hey. in a five and says, Happy LSA Day, and why do you think Ukraine seemed to use Sea Baby drones over RC torpedoes? I believe these Sea Baby drones are cheaper and easier to operate than the uh, RC torpedoes, and that's probably why we see them being used still a lot more than the RC torpedoes, which they've had in development and in service for a bit. But with that... I hope that does address that well. Thank you so much once again for support, Neil. And with that, we are on to the next one. And the next one goes to John Scott, who puts in a two. He says, a big love to everyone in the LSA. Hey, and big love to you, John Scott, and everyone else in the LSA. And thank you once again for being here with us tonight and helping us to keep this thing running. And of course, happy LSA day. And with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and the next one goes to Digifix, and also BJ, BJR, once again, who put in a $2 donation apiece, but no comments on these, but thank you both very much for that support and helping to keep us running. And our next one is going to go to LSA Sergeant Figman, also known as Sarge, hey. and he puts in a 2. Uh, <laughs> he said, LSA, hit the like button. That's an order. And thank you so much for the support tonight, LSA Sergeant Figman. I hope that you enjoyed the shout out uh, that you got earlier for sharing that Crocus City Hall video with us. And we actually showed it on air. We're greatly appreciative of your uh, continued support behind the scenes and in front of everyone live on air. It means a lot. And I got to thank you once again for being the LSA Sergeant Figman. And so with that, thank you so much once again for support. I hope that does address that well. And we are on to the next one. And our next one goes to Clam Jensen, who puts in a two and says, Marmot and Finish is... Marmalade. Marmalade? <laughs> I like it. Uh, but still, thank you so much once again for the support, Clam Jansen. And thank you once again for helping this channel keep on running. And thank you for sharing what Marmot is in Finnish. That is really cool. And thank you for your first support to this channel ever. And with that, we are on to the next one. In our next one goes to another channel legend, Margaret Hemsley, who puts in an eight Australian. Hey! Thank you very much, Margaret, for that support. She said, apparently I have dementia. Who are you? I'm also elderly. So how old is elderly? And this is my first super chat question mark. Who are you again? I forget. Oh, okay. And Margaret, also, I'm glad you're taking oh. uh, some comedy in it. Because I tell you what, if I could put a stop to the bums harassing people out of our live chat, I would put a stop to it. But sadly, there's nothing we can do because uh, they do have freedom to be bums if they want to be bums. Uh, but I'm glad you find comedy in it because uh, it does irritate me quite a bit. Um, and if y'all don't know, there's a group of uh, clowns out there that run around trying to harass pro-Ukraine supporters and they're pro-Russians uh, and they try to come around and harass the pro-Ukraine viewers in our live chat. So uh, the Russians uh, are everywhere, including the pro-Ukraine community even here. Uh, but Enforcer, what say you? Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to agree with what Matthew said there. And Margaret, uh, I heard about that. I actually heard about the original time they tried to say that. 
a while ago. And these people are such shitty people. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Uh, they're they're like the absolute scum of the earth. They just live in the dwellings of uh, basements rent free. Um, I mean, we we're in a basement, but we pay rent, so you know it's a it's a step above. Uh, but these people just live in a basement rent free and are just constantly harassing people. And I remember a long time ago, I saw that they said, "Oh, Margaret Hemsley, um, they're taking advantage. The enforcers, the sick enforcers, are taking advantage of Margaret Hemsley." And it's like, how? It's like, it, it, and they they came up with this whole weird whack conspiracy theory that you have dementia and that you're an elderly woman and everything. And I'm like. That, that's just, it, it's so stupid the amount of lies that they'll tack onto some. I mean, you're clear proof of the lies that they make on everything to try and make us look like evil people. Uh, and, and on top of that, they, now they've actually moved on to trying to, I think, directly ha harass you on Twitter from what I've seen. Uh, and it's just, it's just a stupid group of people. I'm glad that you do take it well uh, because... It always just blows me away how pathetic and how bummy people really can get uh, out there on the internet. And it really does show you that sometimes, while the internet has some of the most amazing people out there, like it does in the LSA, like you, Margaret Hemsley, there are also some of the worst and scummiest people out there, which all usually revolve around the hot dog man. Uh, the hot dog man is like the king of scum lord, uh, or, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but <laughs> Man, that was, that was accurate. Accurate enough. Yeah, and, and of course, uh, he's... He's decided that he's now going to upgrade to being the king of scum, and so he's moved into the palatial palace, which he's already made it very clear he can't afford the palatial palace of the new uh, scum lord apartment. So I hope, I hope that goes well for him, uh, and I hope that his bums continue to find some kind of entertainment out there in just being absolute shitheads, uh, really proving the uh, some people in the Ukraine war community shouldn't be a part of the Ukraine war community. At least that's what I think. Uh, but with that... Thank you so much once again for the support, Margaret, and helping this channel to keep on running. And with that, we are on to the next one. And our next Super Chat goes to Lori Hill, the longtime channel legend as well, who puts in a $20 donation. It says, from the first night, he, with 22 other people, listening to you talk about the Ukraine invasions to today, more than two years later, congratulations on the realization of the vision. And thank you so much, Lori Hill. You have been here forever. Uh, and it's crazy to think that you were here with those other folks watching way back then. Um, it's been it's been a journey. I mean, it's been such a journey. I went from uh, being really honestly, I think I've actually changed a good bit over the course of the war. I always still, you know, kind of keep the joking tone that we had at the beginning of the war still. But my mindset on some things has started to change greatly from those first few days when you were watching. Uh, it's crazy to think that that much time has passed where I can actually truly change uh, because of just the simple fact of how much time has really passed. Uh, but still, I got to thank you so much once again for the support and helping this channel to keep on running, Lori Hill, because if it wasn't for folks like you who had been here for this long, the realization of the vision would have never been a reality. We would have never been able to make this happen. We wouldn't be able to be here right now, and we wouldn't be able to celebrate having 179,000 subscribers. Actually, right now, exactly 179,020 uh, here with us right now. And so thank you so much once again. Uh, and with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and our next one goes to Sick Lid, who puts in a $20 donation. And thank you very much for that support. He says, Russian bots can never stop the Leaf Spring Army. And amen, brother. Six lid, uh, six lid, six lid. Nothing will ever stop the Lee Spring Army. Not the uh, bums of scum lord. Not the uh, not the Russian bots. Nothing will stop the LSA. Nothing ever has. Nothing ever will. The Lee Spring Army is a is a truly unstoppable force. Not because of Enforcer Matt and me, but because of the passion and drive that all of y'all have in this community. Uh, y'all are what makes it possible for the flag of the Lee Spring Army to fly higher and over different areas across the internet each and every day. And for us to continue on our vision of the way we report news and the way that support for the Western world and all of the goodness that it's brought should be made. And so with that, thank you so much once again. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. All right, and our next one goes to Box Breaker, who puts in a five. And he says, it's been on for a week now, and absolutely love you folks, and all the outstanding information you deliver, and much love from Canada. 
And also, thank you very much for the very, very high praise, actually. And that's very nice of you to say. But Enforcer, what say you? And thank you for being one of those new viewers, Boxbreaker, who has just been watching for about a week. Uh, that's crazy to think. And I got to thank you so much for being here for just for a short amount of time and already finding this channel to be worthwhile enough to support. Uh, that's something that blows us away when people have only been here for a short amount of time and they find the channel impressive enough that they would want to be a part of its continuance. Uh, and so I got to thank you so much once again for the support. Thank you so much for being one of our Canadian viewers. And thank you so much for all the kind words that you're throwing our way. It really does mean a lot to us, and it inspires us to continue this channel's existence. Uh, and with that, we are on to the next one. And our last one goes to Dead Gamer, who puts in a $1 donation. And thank you very much, Dead Gamer. And I hope I hope you're all good. Uh, but uh, thank you very much for that support. And sadly, no comment to address. But with that, that is our last Super Chat to cover. But I'm seeing Marlene Mercer LSA saying that I did not get to her live chat. So let's see here if I missed it, because uh, that would be uh, another one. Let's see if I can get to the uh, fan funding page here and see. And unfortunately, like I said before, we're going to have to like, maybe look into that plan that I mentioned, because like it is getting overwhelming. And here is Marlene Mercer LSA's Super Chat, who puts in a 27 Canadian donation. And thank you very much, Marlene, for that support. And sorry for almost <laughs> missing it. He says... She says, your passion and dedication to get the news out in its true form is crazy amazing. And thank you both so much forever, always being so reliable. And you have a lot of supporters that stand with you both for good reasons. And happy LSA Day. And happy LSA Day to you as well, Marlene. Sorry that that was missed. Uh, we were actually, Matthew was speaking about something. The live chat has gotten so nuts lately. Uh, and let me go look at the chat rate right now, just to let you all know. The chat rate has gotten up for most of the stream above 150 um for most of it up until we got to the question segment and now it's down to like in the 30s and the 60s uh but for most of it it was up to about 150 chats a minute which means that matthew was looking at nearly three live chats a second and trying to moderate it all and then get live chats and then respond to people and then also go through perusing through twitter it is a lot to handle and sadly uh it looks like because of that, we're starting to miss a super chat here and there, and that was one of yours, and I'm terribly sorry about that, but hopefully we will start to figure out a new way to help uh, ease the workload, at least, so that way we can make sure not to miss super chats. But I do want to apologize on our behalf. Things have been absolutely insane lately, and uh, that's kind of why the live chat was missed. No really good excuse for that, but still, thank you for the support. Uh, and to read Marlene Mercer's super chat... Uh, she said, your passion and dedication to get to the news uh, out in its true form is crazy amazing. Thank you both so much forever, always, uh, for being so reliable. You have a lot of supporters that stand with you both for good reasons. And happy LSA Day. And happy LSA Day to you, Marlene. And thank you so much for those kind words, especially here on LSA Day. That means a lot to me. If it wasn't for folks like you, we wouldn't be able to make a stream like this possible. Uh, we wouldn't be able to keep it running. And I got to thank you so much for being here with us for so long. Also making your profile picture the LSA flag. And once again, helping this channel to keep rolling. Uh, just with your kind words alone. Not just the support, but the kind words really do inspire us a lot. And so with that... Thank you so much once again. I hope I was able to address that well, Marlene, and thank you for being an old guard and a channel legend as well. And with that, we are on to the next one. Uh, we actually have one more. Yes, this one goes to Quantum Fighter. So, and some, and I'll tell you what, Enforcer, we have to do the plan. We have to. This proves it. A uh, Quantum Fighter said in his super chat, "In the dark of the World War II London Blitz, crime skyrocketed among civvies. Police, rescue, military, and I think Ukraine authorities can handle it, or is it a repeat of what's going on?" Uh, and I got to thank you so much for the support, Quantum Fighter, and helping this channel to keep running. Uh, and I would have to say, um. I think it's probably a repeat of what's going on uh, because law enforcement authorities are usually stretched their limit uh, at that point in a war. So it's probably just an increase of crime because of wartime, uh, kind of like the Blitz. And so with that, thank you so much once again for support, Quantum Fighter. I hope that does address that well. And with that, we are on to the next one. And shout out to Techphone. Techphone put in a 15 without a comment. But thank you very much, Techphone, for that support. And we appreciate it very much. And with that, that is actually our last Super Chat to address. If I've missed anyone else's Super Chat, shout at me very loudly in the live chat. We're not going to miss it. We're going to address it before we get off the stream tonight. Uh, and tonight, we've had a total of... 
Uh, looks like the spreadsheet is beyond the limit. So it is a lot of questions tonight. So with that, moving on to our more skilled decoders of the stream, we had Cliff Simonson, Mark Hodges, Earl Bernou, Paul Schultz, Kevin J, Rumpelstiltchen, David Millsaps, and Toxic Bananas. They said Enforcer LSA Signal Corps report uh, is... Uh, let's see here. The second year that the LSA has existed on the internet, long live the LSA, the LSA will never die. And ding, 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 ding. that's the sound of money. And y'all got that dead on the nail. That is the jackpot. Uh, y'all got the message correct. It has been two years of the Lee Spring Army, and the Lee Spring Army will truly never die. And so with that, thank you so much once again to all of y'all for deciphering that Morse code message. I hope that does address that quite well. And with that, it's time for us to move on into the live chats. Due to me not feeling that hot tonight and continuously getting worse as the stream keeps going, we're only going to be answering three live chats, uh, and then we're going to be rounding out tonight's stream. And so with that, we are on to the third to last question of the night. And we have one from Ashley Klein, who says, Do we know, uh, is Russia ever made any of their FOAB, uh, father of all bombs, and the bomb that they made to one-up our MOAB? I think they have some of them. Uh, I don't think they've ever been used. They're just kind of around for propaganda reasons to say that they have a bigger one than the Moab, uh, from what I believe. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well, at least off the top of my head. And we are on to the second to last question of the night. And this one goes to THX, who says, To your knowledge, have the Russians held back any special highly trained units from the Ukrainian fight to protect Moscow? Um, from what we know, uh, that may not be the case. Uh, we actually don't know about specific Russian troop deployments around the area of Moscow to be able to confirm nor deny that, but we understand that the Moscow garrison is heavily stripped of manpower because during the Wagner coup, it appeared that there was no defensive forces that would be able to stop Moscow from being overtaken by the Wagner. Uh, and so with that, I hope that does address that well, at least off of the knowledge we have in the past. And with that, we are on to the final question of the night. And so who is the lucky last person who threw in the lucky last question of the night? All right. And that viewer is Melody Francis, who says, Do you think the world will give more weapons if Russia does a massive attack like blow up the nuclear plant in Zaporizhia? Uh, and it could be a trap for Putin if he's stupid enough to fall in. Uh, can you reread that one again? It says, do you think the world will get more weapons if Russia does a massive attack like blow up the nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia, uh, and it could be a trap for Putin if he's stupid enough to fall in? I think uh, the world would step in with armed intervention if you tried to do something to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, like blow it up and create a forced meltdown. I think that would not only provide more weapons to Ukraine, that would also probably get the West directly involved in the conflict. Uh, so with that, I hope that does address that well. Uh, and thank you so much once again for asking the final question of the night. And with that, this stream is finally rounding out to an end. Uh, I said, uh, as I said a little bit earlier on, uh, we were going to try and make it a little bit shorter because I wasn't feeling that hot, but somehow it still ended up being a three hour and 10 minute long stream, uh, which is very close to being the normal length these days. Beyond that, I appreciate each and every one of y'all being here tonight. It's been an unbelievable night. We had 11.2 thousand people here at the peak, and still, there are 4,800 of y'all here. Right now, 4,800 live viewers is usually the highest that many other Ukraine war streams can get to on other YouTube channels, and somehow this is the lowest point on the live stream since we started three hours and 10 minutes ago. Uh, I got to thank each and every one of y'all so much once again for watching. We appreciate each and every one of y'all being here. Uh, I know that when I talk about these numbers at the end of the stream, because we do this pretty much every single night, uh, it pretty much just sounds like I'm combing through some massive numbers, 11,200 people, 90,000 views, stuff like that, You know, and how many subscribers we've gotten through today. But I know one thing is that behind every single number, there are viewers that are there. People who are actually watching this channel. People like Butchie777, uh, Heather Fitzgibbon LSA, Hardwater Channel, Linton Adams, uh, Melody Francis, Quantum Fighter, Nova, uh, Epic Trains Canada, uh, uh, Chronically Alien, um, Edgy, uh, uh, Edgy Boa Nova, I believe, Value Radar, uh, Bobby Levesque, Linton Adams, Brianna Joy, so many of y'all, so many names that we've seen here for so long, just to name a, a small handful of y'all. And I know that each and every one of those numbers is one of you folks right there. We greatly appreciate each and every one of y'all, and I am massively humbled by the fact that y'all find this to be a stream worth watching and a channel to continue to tune into every single day to watch this news and, and to, of course, course share in the moment with everyone else that history is being made one way or another y'all are watching history unfold each and every single day 
It's a massive thing to me. It's a massive thing to Matthew as well. And if you did enjoy tonight and you're brand new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, you don't have to. You could just end up watching and not subscribe. But if you do and you hit the bell button, you'll be notified of when these streams and when our videos come out. We have videos come out pretty much every single day at this point, seven days a week that are 15 to 20 minutes long, covering the major bits of news of the war. And then every single night at 10 p.m. Eastern time, these live streams come out that are covering the past uh, 24 hours of the news of the war war in Ukraine. Every single thing that we were able to gather up off the internet, we put here on the stream and we talk about it just like we did tonight. And then we get to talk to you all after the news is over uh, through the super chats and live chats and really get to reflect on the day with all of y'all or just talk with y'all like we did again tonight. Um, it means a great deal to me to get to do that. And I hope that y'all join us all and continue to be here with us well on into the future until Ukraine eventually wins this war. I'd also like to give a huge shout out to Clam uh, Jansen, who just threw in a $10 Canadian super chat and said, and said, and he said, uh, I appreciate the two years of work from you. And I thank you so much, Clam Jansen. I appreciate uh, the nearly two years that you've been with us, I believe. Uh, that is incredible. And I thank you so much once again for the massive support. And so with that, it is time for us to end. Good night, good luck, stay safe, take care. Slavo Ukraini, and long live the Lee Spring Army. The Lee Spring Army will never die. And good night, folks, and thank you for joining us all on LSA Day today and covering the huge events that took place today. And of course, be sure to join us tomorrow for our short war summary, where we'll cover all the major events happening throughout the night and tomorrow morning. Uh, and with that, thank you all. Slava Ukraine. Uh, here I'm Slava. And good night. Get some rest. Yes. The Leaf Spring Army sends its regards. Oh!